85. You know it's a motherfucking party now when Chico B walk in the building. We about to talk a whole bunch of shit in here about how we be killing. Gangsta. Gangsta shit. Gangsta shit. From 89. 86. 86. 82. On a bitch. Color how are you? I'm so great. I feel good. I'm about to roll this weed that I own. Chico B, I'm glad you're joining us, man. The phone lines have been jumping off the hook. They're trying to win these Ike Turner t-shirts that we've been giving away right here. The phone lines wide the fuck open. Call in. Get your Ike Turner t-shirt. Get your Ike Turner t-shirt. We got those Patty LaBelle tickets coming up later on in the segment. Patty LaBelle will be performing with Stephanie Mills at the Chateau. So make sure you Call in and be our hundred caller and you will get the tickets to see the show. Last time we had a show, it was crazy. My man Jaheem had the place sold out last night at Stacy's Catfish Bar and Grill. Tuesday nights, karaoke goes down every night at Stacy's Catfish Bar and Grill. Don't forget to talk about the specials, Carlos Miller. When you come into the club, you automatically get a free catfish tray. That's right, catfish tray on the house when you come and party. Just make sure you're down there because the catfish is on the chain and the dance is, well, you got to see for yourself. Make sure you stop through on Thursday nights. They got 33 cent chicken wings in there. 33 cents. That's three, four dollars if you can count. We got the phone lines wide open, man, if you're trying to go and see Bebo Bryson. We got those Bebo Bryson tickets coming Bebo up. Bryson tickets coming up in, in the, the next, next hour. hour. Don't forget. Carlos, you said something about the 30 cents wings, but you forgot to talk about the flavors. They got all different types of flavors, and they got a new program going on this Wednesday night where you can create your own wing flavor. That's right. You can create your own wing flavor down there tonight, so go on down there and have a party. Don't forget this weekend, Saturday night, we're going to be at Sunny Scoot and Booth. If you want to get in free, all you got to do is bring a copy of your GED. That's right. We're letting all GED graduates get in for the low low that night, man. Make sure you come out Saturday night. We're gonna be out there live, baby. Seven o'clock, we're gonna start the live show from Radio Street. Make sure you're out there, bring us something, man. Bring me some good chicken or something. Be out there in the parking lot all day. Get haircuts for the kids. We got a bouncy house, balloons, hot dogs. All the moms, we want y'all to come out to the back to school party jam. That's gonna be in the Kroger parking lot on Old National Highway. We're gonna be out there all afternoon. Free haircuts. For the kids. Bring your kids out there and get them a good shape up. The father is gonna be grab the blunt. She gonna be grab the blunt. She gonna be grab That was the our blunt. producer right there. Sometimes he butts in when he's not talked to. But you know this is the show and we gotta go. Don't try to whisper off the camera because we're sitting in a little ass room. Everybody heard the words that he was trying to say to you. Hey, check your phone, my brother. Because I sent some notes, like, subscribe to the show, and go out and vote. Yes, sir. Don't forget, we got to give credit to the one and only, J-O-N, over there on the keys. And when I say the keys, I mean the keys to success. Yes, indeed. He's playing the guitar, but he's got the keys to success. Listen to him as he grooves. Chico Bean only shouted out J-O-N, because he don't know the other nigga yet. They haven't been formally. Oh my Introduce. goodness, I didn't know what he was doing I thought he might have lived here Ladies and gentlemen, I thought this might be his One bedroom apartment, I didn't know I didn't want to put work on you brother And didn't know you were working But now that I know you're working, keep going That's right We might have let that shit play this whole time That shit just too funky Yes indeed We ain't had a good funk episode In a minute In a minute Yeah, we about to get in it You already know 85 South Radio Show, hosted by Carlos Miller and your boy Chico Bean. We got a phone call coming in. Carlos is waiting on an important package. He has some very, very unique hard bottom dress shoes that he ordered offline. And he has to make sure that they are coming on time. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are our 15th caller, you too can get a pair of the hard bottoms that Carlos Miller is now waiting to receive on the house. That's right, on us, because we love you, baby. Big shout out to Wendy Williams. <coughs> Big shout out to the Wendy Williams. 
Yes, indeed. Shout out to Wendy Williams. And we gotta give you a big shout out because you big, All the baby. women built like Wendy Williams. You big, baby. It's your song. Hey, you big, baby. You big, All baby. the women built like Wendy Williams. It's your song. Hey, you big, baby. All right. If you big like Wendy, let me hear you clap, clap your hands. And if you clap your hands, it's gonna be up high. Because Wendy B in the sky. That's right. Now I know what you do, brother. I didn't know that you were gonna get down like that. But now that you're getting down, I wanna give you credit. Go ahead and work what you're working over there. How long have you been doing this? Doesn't matter, cause you're here with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a phone party on the 85 South Radio Show hosted by none other than Carlos Miller and Chico Bean. Boy, we about to get funky like a chitlin' now later. Oh man, could you imagine the first bite into that one, baby? Ooh, that'll tear your whole day to shreds. We're gonna get nasty like a catfish hot pocket, baby. Ooh boy, catfish hot pocket. And you know it ain't gonna get warm in the middle, so it's gonna be white and cold. But it's gonna be hot round the edges, burn your lips to shreds, baby. I know y'all been listening right now. This is the school cruise of the 85 South Radio Still Show. Got seven backstage passes. To see Smokey Robinson. That's right, seven best. And this time he will be with the Miracles. It will not be like the last show. I heard some people were upset that the Miracles weren't there. But the Miracles will be there this time. So you will get Smokey and the Miracles on us. And who are we, Carlos Miller? You know who we are. I know who I am. But I also know who I used to be. And it ain't got nothing to do with right now. Because I'm still trying, baby. You understand? Hey, baby, that's all you can do here. Just like all our great listeners out there, I know you guys are trying. And keep on trying, baby, because the trying don't stop. I want to give a shout out to all of the people in Job Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to us in Job Corps right now, yeah, man, you know what? I can't wait for you to get your plumbing license because sometimes my toilet don't flush, if you know what I'm saying. So shout out to all my people out there in Job Corps. We are down with you. And keep on listening, baby. We just want to give you a shout out. I got your letter in the mail. Gotta send some love to my man Melvin down there at the Truck Drivers Institute. Trying to get his CDLs, man. Down there at the Truck Drivers Institute. My man Melvin is down there working on getting his CDLs, man, right now. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Craig, the chicken cooking Chick fil A, man. I just want to thank you for blessing me the way you bless me every time I come through there. Always putting the chicken down for an extra four minutes just to make sure it's crispy enough for me. Craig, thank you so much for your service and keep on listening. You know who else we got to send some love to? Who's that, Carlos? To all the newborn babies named after their father. Whether it be male or female, some of you are named after your father, but hey, love is love, baby. You ever seen a two-year-old named Frank? Yes, sir. I have. Yeah. Well, it's I even have. worse when her name is Frank Kena, but we love you, baby. We love you. Your dad loves you, too, obviously. Okay, man, we got to cut this off and get into some of this 85 South Show. Well, we already are in the 85 South Show. This well, you know, we got to pay some bills. I mean, y'all, of course. Yeah, I like how you let that, uh, that. Yeah, what, what's that shit called, when you, what you did at the fade end? Fade out. Nah, but it lingered. <clears throat> it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a fade, it lingered. I don't know what that was, but I like that. I like that, man. Chico Bean, how you, how you, you know, everybody's up in arms right now. Why is that? They disappointed, man. Why is that? Game of Thrones. They yeah, didn't like that man. Last they didn't like that last episode, man. But you know, I, I I look at it like I'm a Game of Thrones fan. That's why I asked you, cause you know way more about it than me. Yeah, I'm a Game of Thrones fan. I didn't even watch Game of Thrones. I was one of them dudes who, you know, was like, I'm not about to watch no shit about no dragons, nigga. But then I watched that first episode, and then once you watch that first one, it, it, it gets you. It gets you. So I really wasn't disappointed with the ending because. I don't have no expectations of white people. They're going to do what they want to do whenever they want to do it. I just, you know, hey, I'm a fan. I'm going to watch whatever y'all put out, and that's what it is. Now, I can see in that the crazy part is how enthralled the white people who watch the show get in it. Because, you know, we shooting right now. We're doing Wild and Out right now. So we're around, a, a, you know, a, a variety of white people. Salute to all of y'all. But they were highly upset the next day. Oh, yeah. I mean, discussing the plot and the, what they should have done was John should have did this and this. I'm like, damn, they really invested. They really be invested in that shit. Super like, invested. Emotionally. But you know what, though? That's how I feel like black people probably was invested in good times in the 70s. But they wasn't. You don't think so? Nah. Why not? Because, like, 
Good times. It was a good show, but it wasn't. It it, it didn't. It wasn't nothing that we needed to further discuss. It was pretty much cut and dry. But I mean, I understand that. I understand that part. But to like see five. black people on TV at that time, and to see black a black family on TV at that time, probably had to be some amazing shit. Like people probably. I was, think it's probably like five episodes of Good Times that people talk about. Oh yeah. I give you my my picks. Um, well, the number one episode of Good Times uh, in every know. community is when Penny, Penny got burned, burned with iron. iron. Yep. <clears throat> Another underrated episode of Good Times is when J.J. painted Black Jesus and they had good luck, and Florida tried to make him put the Black Jesus in the closet. Yep. It wasn't Black. It was Black Jesus, but he had painted him after Ned the Wino, mm-hmm. made him look like Black Jesus, and they started finding yeah, money. With the Afro. James got a job, and Thelma got accepted to school. Michael made some good grades, and then... J.J. was like, I told you, mama. And she replaced it with the white Jesus. She didn't want to hear this. Another one was oh, when let J.J. Me you, let me joined, the joined the game. That was about to be that one. My One of my favorites was Georgia. What was the dude's name that uh, met up with him in the hallway that ended up popping him? Mad Dog. Mad Dog. Come on, man. Mad Dog. How that's about th- when, when fucking Penny and Michael won the talent show? Oh, yeah. That was yeah. a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. The one where Walona adopted Penny. I ain't never seen that one. That was like a three-part episode. Y'all remember when Walona adopted? Was that adopted? after James died? No, Walona uh, adopted Penny. Yeah, that was after James died. Okay. Penny came later. Walona adopted Penny right after her mama burned her with the iron. That was like two, three episodes later. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But I, I just <clears> assumed <throat> that people would be invested like that as in regards to how people was just overwhelmed with the Game of Thrones ending not being what they wanted it to be. It's crazy. Well, black people, we get disappointed by shit all the all time. All the time, We yeah. don't really give no fucks about no TV show. No. You, you got to deal with real life disappointment no, no. as a nigga. But you'd be surprised the type of TV shows that black people like. Like, that's their show that don't have no black people in it. I, you know what? That's crazy because I say this about the TV shows that you watch. You watch a lot of uh, the car shows and all that. And I never watch those type of shows, but... They are really entertaining. Like, just the stuff that they do to the cars and all that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you would learn a lot about, you know, what you don't know by looking at what TV shows people watch. I was thinking about that shit earlier, bro. Like, comedians ask me all the time for comedic advice about writing jokes and shit. I'd be like, man, you got to put a lot of shit in your head. The best thing to write jokes from is, like, shit that you don't like. Mm-hmm. Because you really just riffing and, and tearing the shit up, and that's all what jokes are. Speaking of which, did you see Colin Kaepernick's girlfriend had the girl from uh, the Teen Mom show, 16 and Print, or some shit, one of them Teen Mom shows. Mm-hmm. And she was asking about the shit that she was posting on social media because the girl was all, like, she was she was in tour with the other girl for saying some shit about her husband and then the old girl was like, well, you was saying shit about my husband then she tried to play the victim and cried and ran off and all that shit. Huh. Yeah. You know, shout out to Ness Nitty, yeah, man. Yeah, we she love a real Ness, one. man. She's a real one. We done known her for a while and that's, I don't know, man. That's, that's, I still think that Colin Kaepernick was given one of the most magnificent railroads of all time. I mean, just because the talent level that he has that's clear to not get a shot at all is crazy. Just because you did something that any you know, human being would want to do in regards to saving human life. That shit is crazy, man. Salute oh. to Colin Kaepernick. <clears throat> and- <clears throat> yeah, man. Colin Kaepernick is a real G because it take a lot to restrain yourself like that. Especially, Especially when you're, when you're looking big. at the motherfucker who put in the book. He know exactly who said what about him and who kept him out the league. That's the fucked up part about it. He know. He might not know all of them, but he knows some know of them. enough of them to know he why he know the motherfuckers who, who started the bullshit. That's crazy. See, that's that real life disappointment that we was talking about that keep us not giving a fuck about how Game of Thrones ended. That this thing. nigga still don't play football. This is fucking crazy. It's amazing, man. Like how somebody at that level that can reach that, just to think about what it takes to reach that level of success as a black man. Bro, they tried to tell me Eli Manning was a better quarterback than goddamn Colin Kaepernick. Who told you that? Shit, there's a lot of motherfuckers who still in the NFL who they they basically saying that are better quarterbacks than Colin Kaepernick. I mean, yeah, it's easy to say that when you're not seeing what the other quarterback can do. If you're not giving me, I mean, you might be right, but give me a shot to prove you right. You know what I mean? It's easy to say that you're right when you're not giving the shot to see what the alternative perspective is. So, yeah, it is easy to say somebody is a better quarterback than him because you haven't given him the opportunity to quarterback shit. Right. So, it's crazy. Like I said, that's... The, they the offering that, contracts to motherfuckers who ain't played football in five, six, seven yeah, I'm years. I'm talking about 
Al Bundy. It's crazy. It's, I mean, it's Motherfuckers is on the phone with him like, man, I'm too fat to play football. They were like, well, Al come on, Bundy. man, give it a shot. Al Bundy. It's Nothing crazy. beats a failure but a good track. Exactly. It's or crazy. some shit like that. I be but, getting my quotes mixed but up. But salute to him for And then one of the things that I got out of it, Los, is that, you know, it feel good to be able to see somebody still hold their head high going through all of that publicly. You know what I'm saying? To be able to still walk around with it. Especially when you have all of these, like I said, the the, the, the other side of it. Because, you know, we sitting here saying positive things about the situation. But there's plenty of other outlets and people who have the exact opposite perspective that we do and are doing the same thing that we are right now, sitting behind the microphone broadcasting it to the world. So you got to get all of that. And for him to be able to still walk around and hold his head high, that's good motivation, man. Salute to you. You know what I say to those people who take their platform and say the opposite? Man, fuck you. Hey. That's simple. I'm not going to put a lot of a lot of emphasis on the fuck you because I want you to know that it's a casual fuck you. Uh. Like it's a fuck you and fuck you. Uh. Nothing goes with that. Just a, a fuck you. Don't even, not even a combo. Just a plain fuck you. Yeah, you don't even get a fuck you. Nothing else after that. It's usually the second word that determines the level of anger after the fuck you. You know what I mean? No, but it's just it's just flat out fuck you. Man, I don't even it. want to when attach it's a flat to out to fuck it. you, you're not attached to it. Right. When it's fuck you motherfucker, it's something come with that. Right. That motherfucker add another element. No, to I'm it. really getting, I'm, I don't know, I'm frustrated, bro. I'm tired of all my issues as a black person being ignored around this bitch. And then, you know, I know the nature of black people, but I, I don't know how we, how we would move all this once. Like, I know it's only, you can push a nigga so far before he respond. And I'm wondering, what's the tipping point before niggas just be like, man, we tell this shit up. In this day and time, I think we, I, you know, I ain't going to say we passed that point, but I'm, I'm going to say we passed that point. Think what so? I mean by that is we don't live in the same, it's like, we in the, we, you know, we talk all the time. We in the Matrix, bro. Like yes, though, I don't even know how much of this shit is real you know or, what I mean? or, or what. And it's like, you you got to look at the way the world's set up. It's so easy to just formulate mass group think now. It used to be hard to do that um, 20 years ago. You wanted a group of motherfuckers to think like you. You it had took to go a couple find weeks them to get. and get with them and talk to them. Call them on the phone. And come back and talk to them again. And then, you know... Just to make sure they them. still feel like just that. To, exactly. Now you can create mass group think by just, you know, picking up your phone. So Pushing I think the button. things that, that we go through, we got to really elevate our way of thinking to be able to navigate the world that we live in. Because it's not the same world where tearing up shit is going to have the same results that it did before. Because you ain't going to... It's impossible. Because there's too many people out there who don't want to record the process of tearing the shit up. Just recording shit. You know what I mean? They gonna wanna be out there. You supposed to be tearing shit up, but you got hold up. Wait a minute, hold up. Hold I gotta up get this quick. on Hold up, hold up real quick. Yeah, Nick, it's on. <laughs> the motherfucking revolution won't be televised, but it will be tweeted, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that that right there is, is, is not the element that is gonna cause the type of change that we need. So I think that we just gotta be, you know, vessels. Like we are, you know, doing what we do and try to set an example that, you know, it's possible to move around out here and be successful and be happy without without changing. My money fell out of my pocket. You got a lot of money. I mean, you know, I had enough for it to fall out of my pocket. I tell you that much. Yeah, man. Shit definitely need to change, though. Bro, I be getting on social media. They doing niggas so bad out here. I mean, I don't think the, oh, That's the thing, Lois. I don't really think the... The world has necessarily changed so much. I you just know why the world ain't changed? Has Bro, the world, because this shit is light compared to what's going on in the rest of the world. Exactly. I don't think the world has changed at all. Like, the, the ability to be able to to understand that the world we live in, bro, you got to have a perspective that allow you to get through the shit day to day. Ain't that crazy? Day to day. That's crazy. Well, how do you get up every day and navigate through this shit as a black man? What's some of your first thoughts when you wake up in the morning as a black man in America? One of the first things I think about when I wake up is that oh, I'm, I got another one. That's the first thing. I got another one. I thought I was the only one. I, so every morning I wake up, I, it takes me about two minutes to be like, all right, I'm still alive. I, I, I guess what I'm saying. That's what I feel like. Real shit. I wake up like... All right, I got another one. You got, got another, another one. 
He right. gave me another one. So that's the thing. Like I look at life that way. Like you know, my perspective on on life is different than a lot of people because I dealt with death so early. Like so, you know what I mean? I appreciate being alive. So every day I get to be alive, I'm like, I get to be alive. But then when you start trying to navigate all the other shit, oh my God. Ooh, boy, that's when you got to get creative. Like, I feel like niggas is some of the most brilliant. And I say niggas with passion because I don't like the, the, the negative connotation that's put on that word. And, and I say this and I stand on this. I think that what that word represents to us and the ability to be able to take something that is negative and you know has all of the you know just evil that's attached to it and be able to turn it into something that's a term of endearment speaks to that shit that we got to get up and do every day but and see, it's that's a reflection what, of how long we've been to having me. to do it it's not just a word to me nigga is really like my nationality yeah like i'm i'm a nigga <clears throat> And I ain't even in. I'm a whole nigga. Me too. That's like what I'm a saying. Whole, I'm, like, I'm not. I'm and like not if they needed that. somebody to be the epitome of a nigga, like if they needed somebody to be like the face of like a nick, I'd do it. I I don't even know if like in never even no negative way, bro. Yeah, because it's like, not bro, a negative thing. Like you think about the stuff that like we talking about now. Because I got two brains. I think of shit like when shit come to me and I process information. I think of it in like all these different scenarios, but I know. That my favorite one is always the nigga scenario in my mind. It's just my whole nigga. Everything. And what makes niggas beautiful is the fact that you don't act on that majority of the time. You don't. Bro, that's not I the thing so that you base I do so much nigga your, shit. It's just normal. But you don't. That's what I'm saying. Like your ability to be able to navigate when it's time to act like a nigga and when it's time to you know, fit the description of what somebody else may look at just so you don't end up having to act like a nigga. But sometimes magic. I had to check my, like, if, I'm, I'm going to tell you how you know you being a nigga. Bro, when you see the police and you have to adjust anything, you caught yourself being a nigga. Like, man, let me turn this goddamn Gucci man down. I'm out here being a whole nigga right now. <coughs> excuse me. But, uh, excuse me. But uh, yeah, really? I feel you. I think my favorite nigga activity though, is just having on new shoes and and keeping them clean. Oh yeah. To the point where white people be like, "How do you keep your shoes so clean?" Magic. Are they new? Nah, it's nah just, just I don't new. fuck around yeah, like that. Exactly. That's the exactly. number one way that black men keep their shoes and shit clean. That's a life lesson. Don't be out here fucking around like that. Yeah. When a nigga tell you I don't fuck around like that, you gotta respect that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And that's the thing. Like, the shoes mean so much to us because I think shoes mean so much to niggas because of the walk that we got to walk in life. We got to walk a, a hell of a walk. So if I got to walk this fucked up walk and I ain't got no choice, look at my shoes. Nigga, hold on one second. Let me get my people in. Pause. Hit the weed. <laughs> All right, and we are tuning in live. We are back again talking about some of our favorite nigga activities. Yes, what a glorious topic that is, fellas. Man, it's so much ground that we got to cover right now as niggas because there ain't nobody speaking for us. Really? This, that, this podcast for us right now. Yeah. What's some of your nigga activities that you like to indulge in? Let's continue the conversation. Tell the motherfuckers I'm coming and I ain't coming. Oh, ooh. Man, I'm on my way. Mm. That means I'm about to leave the crib. Right. Yo. That's a good one. Uh, what else? Some more of my favorite nigga activities. Talking loud in public. Ooh. Especially when I see somebody I didn't expect to see. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about what you... Hey, buddy, can you keep it down? I'm, first of all, I'm not your fucking buddy. <laughs> don't be condescending. I ain't seen this nigga in years, and I don't even know how to get in touch with him. Yeah. I'm excited. Of course we talking loud. Some of my other favorite nigga activities is when white people give you dirty looks, and you be like, what the fuck, fuck you looking, looking at? at oh, man. my God. You don't make a motherfucker piss on yourself if you do that. Oh my god. Piss all on themselves in the airport in the morning. 
Crazy. You know another one of mine, Lo? What? Showing up late. Yes. I just, sometimes I just like to be late sometimes. You fuck it. Fuck, I don't good. even like the first part of when shit starts. Exactly. You ever been early? Mm. Ain't that lame as fuck? Ooh. Now you just sitting there waiting on people. Mm. And I hope some cool motherfuckers show up, because this shit, they tricked me on this. That's what I'm saying. You took it. That's the thought. You can get to a point where showing up late is cool. But you got to work to get to the point where they. I, I got a theory happy about to this. Happy to see you whenever you show up. What if, what if I'm not late? What if I didn't want to be at the whole party? What if I'm only good for an hour and a half, two hours of party? You done invited me to some shit that's gonna last four to six hours. How you mad at me? Cause I showed up for the last two. Huh? Feel good to be able to do it. Come on, man, I had to make sure the shit was, was fun. Yeah. yeah, you ever showed up it's somewhere? It's your party. It ain't even about me. You showed you ever showed up somewhere that was told to you prior to you getting there how awesome it was gonna be, and then you arrived? Oh my god. Oh my goodness. That right there take the wind out your sails, cause when you get to a certain point, you don't really be wanting to go fuck with nothing anyway. And you hear this, man, I'm telling you, boys, go, man, we about the boy about to be crazy. And they feel like, man, I'm trying to tell you, slamming is going down, man. As soon as you walk in the door, bottles, this nigga throwing money, titties, everything. Slim is going down. We got to the... And then you get in there and then nigga looking at you like, yeah, man, I really, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what happened, bro. I guess. You know what? We waiting on some people to walk up. Yeah. It's gonna turn up later, bro. Like for real, you just sit down and just chill. We got the little game going over there. You can uh, jump in that, play connect for yeah. something until we wait for the bitches to come. Bro, you ever oh, been somewhere? Nah, I was just about to ask you. You ever been somewhere and the hoes didn't show up? Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is an awkward conversation, boy. When that moment when you realize it's over and they not coming, woo! Who's gonna take the rap for that one, Slim? That's Hold gonna up, be tough. We need tough. some silence for this one, cause this is this is a very touchy subject. That's and I feel crazy. like like you the perfect nigga to ask about this. Let like we're gonna do this with as much respect as we can. Of course. But it but it's all with respect. We live in a world where hoes do exist. Yes. And I don't want these to, this to be taken the wrong way. I don't want regular women to be listening to this yeah. and then associate themselves with what we talking about. Because we, re right we really talking straight and directly to the hoes right now. So if you're not a hoe, this guy, this ain't got nothing to do with you. No, and then please don't be mad or, or think that we mean any disrespect by trying to by, enhance by, yes. the hoes. It's niggas who, who want to hear this right now. Because and that's who we talking to. That's what it is. So How important, to the hoes that's listening, right. let them know how important them showing up to shit when they say they are is. Listen, ladies. I mean, I'm sorry, not the ladies. There you go. Hoes. That's what's going to confuse them. Yeah, We're sorry. not talking to Listen, the ladies. We're not talking to the ladies. Hoes. Listen, you have to understand as a man, it's a very unique process to be in position where you expect some hoes to show up. Like, niggas got to be out here winning. We got to walk that walk that our shoes got to be clean for. So I ain't got time to just always be fucking around waiting on the hoes. But when I do have that time, I really need the hoes to show up because that excitement that you give yourself about the hoes coming, that's not that anything is going to happen. It's not that we have any expectation, mm -mm. but it's just the fact hoes that make the whole hoes atmosphere better. change the atmosphere. The energy change when hoes walk in the room. So it's like when the hoes don't show up, all that energy that you was waiting on, I mean, it's like a Rocky fight. Niggas is in there doing push-ups. Let me ask you Taking this. Taking shots. Let me ask you this. You know this. what I'm saying? Running you to the store that three, four times. From a oh nigga who God. there already, and he hit you with a sense of urgency. Say, nigga, where the fuck you at? I'm on my way. Why? Nigga, hurry up. It's so many goddamn hoes in this bitch. Most of the fun that you have had in your life as a nigga the involved was a that phrase it. right there, yeah. nigga. Every, if you went, went to some shit, and it wasn't so many goddamn hoes, I bet you that shit was lame as fuck. I believe it. All the way live. Because it's like... Every hoes, time you ask a nigga how some shit was, that's his first statement. Man, oh, Bro, how was so the cruise? Many hoes. Nigga, it was so oh, many so goddamn many hoes, hoes on that there. boat. Whoa! He might not have talked to none of them, <laughs> but they was there. Exactly. And even he though was he, with his wife. Even though he, he couldn't didn't even talk fuck. to none of them, that's what I was going to... Bro, the fact that he can talk to, about them now, all his niggas is going to want to have that conversation. So tell me about these hoes. 
Because his perspective is just he appreciate the fact that he was there with him. It don't have nothing to do with his intent. If it you just, think we capping right now, watch a nigga listen to another nigga tell him about a spot where some hoes was at. Oh, big smile. Bro, tell me about a place you went where it was just a goo goggle of hoes. Man, a goo goggle of hoes? A whole bunch I of hoes. I went to Jamaica. It was a bunch of hoes over there? And they had one of them fly away. Listen, let me tell you something about them type of events. Those are unique events. Because you have your people there that are in relationships and they there to have a good time. But then you got the hoes. And the unique aspect about those type of situations is the age range for whole attendance is widened drastically. So you have the, the, the young hoes, the middle-aged hoes, and the original hoes. And they all there together. And it's like... You don't even know how to navigate that because you used to seeing the hoes. Because it's, it's three to. different approaches. Yeah, it's like the you, old hoes is on you, off top. Come on, let's go get some drinks. Where y'all gonna be at? We about to go change. The old hoes is giving you much. Walking blame. up to you, singing some Betty Wright. The young hoes don't even speak to you the night before y'all fly out. Off some, you don't even drink. She off some makers mock. You don't even she, think women can drink she that. Drinking she drinking Crown Royal Black straight out the straight bottle. Straight out the bottle. Her and a fat Coffee bitch flavor. named Annette. Big Annette. <laughs> and they going to do whatever it is. Annette drunk the whole trip. She won't. sweating. She what? drunk the whole trip. She dragged her feet in them flip-flops. Big ass ankles. Dancing to everything. Come on, so man. It was just the fact that, so like I said, you used to seeing the hoes that you used to being around. And you can get kind of blinded by the spectrum of that. Being all that they is. Because you get comfortable. Yeah. Especially if you, you are always around three or four hoes. I mean, because that's a, you you winning in life. Exactly. And when you open it up to where you see that big range, it's like, wow. You know where a lot of hoes is at for right a long now. time. This is why I know the future. Get, the future probably is going to be okay. You know where it's a lot of hoes at? Where? A whole lot of hoes. Where? College. Ah. Uh, it's so course. many. Hoes, bro, I performed in college. It looked like they had just a college full of strippers. These motherfuckers were so fine. I was oh. like, oh, Lord, Jesus. I've been to those types the of colleges. Get me out of here. You got to leave. Bro, you some got of these to HBCUs leave. are fucking amazing. It's just a college full oh, of my God. young, grown-ass, fine women. Young, that's grown. You heard what I said? Young, grown. Young, grown women. And that's the thing. The crazy part is, no matter where you go into the spectrum, you always around some hoes in that environment because like we said all the women there are not hoes but there are hoes there and they you know got who a I whole got a shout different out? perspective than the hoes that when you was in college you know who I got a shout out right now all the niggas who got a job and a bunch of hoes work there I don't know what your job is you might work in a warehouse or something an office building but if it's a bunch of hoes in there you winning, my nigga. Man, it's Because there's so much potential. And that's the thing that you got to, it, it, when you seen, when I saw that many in regards to all of them being in the same place, it made me realize how the way that the hoes approach the situation is dependent upon the time. Cause what is, what hoes, is it about the hoes? But listen, the old hoes, they not going to have the same intensity as the young hoes. Like we did at college and that song came on. The real ass bitch give a fuck about a nigga. Big burger bag, whole five, six, fit. And I'm talking about we watched a room full of young women say they're fucking on the scamming ass rich ass nigga. I said, ooh, the game didn't change. Because when so I was in cold. college, they was not fucking on scamming ass rich ass nigga. It was like you had one to be chick in fucking love. him. And yeah, and she was very unique because she. And she was a hoe. A, a whole one, but it was one. And you had to take the risk of dealing with the scamming ass, rich ass niggas for even fucking with her. What is it about the hoes? Man, listen, I don't know. I think the hoes just don't understand their value and their worth. Like it's Bro, bigger I, than sex. Hoes you provide inspire an environment. Me. Like I'm a com I'm an entertainer, right? Comedian slash entertainer. I'm inspired by what the hoes feel about what I create. Cause I know that niggas niggas are very objective anyway, and it's hard to pull fans yeah, when they niggas. Man. And I don't, I don't fault them for that because niggas is just niggas. Niggas like who they like. Yeah, it is what it is. Right. And, and Some niggas ain't never going to like niggas it. Gonna be able they hate to, it every week to we have, exactly. a show. You know what I mean? Then talk all the craziness in the world. But that's the thing. The hoes provide ease from those type of situations. Mm. Like, it's the value. And that's the thing. Like, I think one of the things is that women 
uh, you know, ashamed of being called a hoe or being a hoe. But the reality is, I think if you just realize what it is you bring to the game and embrace that, then it's not necessarily a bad thing because everybody ain't everything. I never go to the NBA, but I don't desire to. And that's just the way I approach it. You know what I mean? I'm not worried about something that is I'm, not I live who I in am. a town. I don't never say never. Embrace I don't know it. what the fuck might happen. No, I ain't trying. No. I don't not, know what. Not all. Bro. Not, not what well, I can respect. Stranger that. things well, have stranger happened. things have happened. But I mean, just I in leave theory. my life open to all kinds of possibilities. Man. I respect that. But I've done you know, so much yeah. shit I never thought that I would do. Now, I agree with that. But, you know, I'm talking about just in the regards to but the see, host. let me clear that statement up. Because there's a lot of weird motherfuckers who going to take that statement. Well, what the fuck you do, Los? <laughs> None of that goof ass shit you thought when you heard that, nigga. Man. Don't ever try me like that. Yeah, I feel you. But I mean, the hoes just have to embrace the fact that they're hoes. And it's okay to be a hoe if that's what you are, but be you a remember real. Remember hoes back in the day? Oh, man, hoes back in the day. But you remember hoes before you had hoes? Yeah. You remember how you Bro, looked at I the remember hoes when then? I, I remember fir- when I first got out here chasing hoes. Oh, man. Nigga, the only reason I, want my, I wanted my license was to ride with hoes, go get some hoes. Ooh. That was the only reason I passed this driving test. That's the test. crazier, the, how the game is Every changed. young man who is, that's his whole how motivation, is to get the changed. car to get to where the hoes at. The game had changed because you had to have the car to get to where the hoes was at, and you didn't know what the hoes was till you got there. But, but, but you dude, didn't but know you what look they at the, looked like. We like. talk about the other side of the spectrum. You got to keep in mind, these hoes was on the other side of town trying to do the exact same thing, too. Some of them were. Some of them hoes was just sitting over there waiting on a nigga to get his license to come get her whole ass. But some hoes put just as much effort into giving us pussy as we did to get it. But that's what I mean. And I we, think they, they need to be to. appreciated. That was, the, that was the exactly. That was the nature of the game back then. Now, like I couldn't imagine it, when I was in high school if I knew what the hoes at any other high school other than the one that I was going to looked like. Immediately, I didn't know what none of the hoes at Spengar in America like. In America. You know what I'm saying? I went to Dunbar. I was around the hoes I went to school with and the hoes I lived around. And however I was able or capable to move around was depending upon what hoes I saw in other places, i.e. getting a vehicle and being able to explore places that you never explored. Now you can sit in your house as a high school student and scroll through the hoes. Bruh. Think of all the And hoes. just be able to say, hey, and immediately be able to contact her and say, hey, what's good with you? I'm on my way right now. That was a process. It but did Lola, change. Think about all the hoes who wanted to give you some pussy in high school. Ooh. They believed in you first. Yep. That's very true. Bro, you got to reach out to some of them hoes and be like, girl, this is what your investment is. Because <laughs> think about it. Every piece of pussy you ever got in your life led you up into this moment. Exactly. And every piece of pussy that you ever got in your life was given to you. You ain't never went out and nobody got, ever went and got no. And pussy. you ain't never that got no myth. pussy. Every they piece trick of pussy that, made us believe. that was ever given to you was given to you. I don't care what side of the Wouldn't game that you Wouldn't that be cold on. though? You could convince somebody to give you some pussy. It ain't a story sad enough that somebody gonna be like, "Oh, oh my god, really? That happened to you?" Let me run to the house real quick and get a shot. You need some pussy. That's never going to be That's the never. payment. It's not going to be the payment. You would think you being punked if that happened to you. You know what I mean? That's how much people really you know, devalue what it means to really be given some pussy. That means you are the nigga that is worthy of getting some pussy. Oh, my God. And the older you get in your life and the more mature you become as a man to be able to say I'm worthy of getting some pussy is something that comes with a whole lot of requirement on the man's side. You know one phrase that has made me the happiest in my adult life? What's that? All of, Like, in my whole adult life. Nothing makes me happier. Well, it's a few things, but this thing, this phrase really fucking, like, it really lights my life. When a girl come up to you, like, at a party, out socially, she say, you know my homegirl want to give you some pussy. My, my mind, it's like, that is the fucking, that's the finale at the 4th of July for me. It's oof, so much oof, excitement. Oof, oof, oof. I, it take me, like, a few minutes just to process the statement before I even ask who. Exactly. Because I don't give a fuck I who it, it is. Don't I matter. just know that it's somebody somewhere Wanting to give me some pussy. And you Whether I ever listen, get it or not, listen, Carlo, I want it, my let nigga. Let me tell you something, man, about that right there. That means, you got to think about the reality of what that means 
to you as a nigga. That, that she mean, want, I'm a thought. But bigger than that, she talked about fucking you so much that another motherfucker had to come tell you about it. Do you know how much conversation they had to have prior it wasn't to her just seeing around. you? It wasn't once. No. It been go- it's been going on. She tell her that she want to fuck you often to where she seen you and said, I'm not going to miss this opportunity for her. So much to the point That's where how- her friend is... It's fine with her delivering that message. Happy. You did it. You better it. stop saying that. I'm going to tell him. Bitch, tell him. I want him to know. He boasts. I don't know how he doesn't know now. <laughs> and to be that type of nigga, you got to be out here really making it happen. So, Dog, hey. Just to, double, just to double up. Has a girl that you fucked ever came and told you that somebody wanted to give you some pussy? Yes. Yes. You so you've had some assisted yes. pussy. Yes. And that was the you know the awesome part about that is like if it's somebody that you done deal, dealt with, she know the type of fucking you like to do. And she has recommended so your dick. She has recommended oh my God. your dick. But they got four stars on you. Exactly. To another It's hard as hell to get fine, but based I got on four. what you did with her. Like, four. look, do you know and, and that is just as that is just as rare as Pussy being offered as payment for something sad. Another girl that you didn't already had sex with, and you, allowing you to be able to she have spoke sex with well somebody of your else. Dick while you were away. You know who does that? The hoes. This is what we saying. Ladies don't do that. Ladies ain't. Women doing that. don't do that. The hoes do that. And that's the thing. Listen, that's a level of thank you for that. Thank you for respecting us as men to be able to say, hey. You a motherfucker that's worthy hey, of man. getting this pussy. You I, just you, spark, you sparked whole. something in my spirit, and I feel like I gotta say it you right gotta, now. Go ahead, Women gotta man. start disrespecting us, man. You say start? They gotta start. In what regard? Just sexually. Okay. Like we, they gotta be as nasty to us as they don't oh, want us wow. to be. I didn't to know them. where you was going with that, but nah, I'm with you now. I want them, I want them to shut the you know fuck I mean? up. You know, put sometimes titty in your you mouth, don't nigga. know where the ride goes. Right. I want I like that but type of when shit. You're here, you're like, oh, you going up to I'm yeah. going with you. I'm my man. Yeah, I want, yeah, right. Boy. They need to start saying all this shit. Quit walking around here with that good dick, Carlos. Ooh. That's what I wanted to say. Don't give me all the weak ass compliments. But that's the thing. I like the your haircut, boo. No, fuck that. Yeah. But the, the the ladies can't do that because they know the hose is out. And when she Bruh, walk around to say this good ass dick, saying? I mean, hey, but hey, you know you that's must ain't the heard nature none of, these new of the game. Rappers, they love dick. Oh yeah, like I said, fucking on the scam and ass rich ass. All the girls was. I was like, man, listen, fellas, I can't believe that I just saw that when I was in school. Bro. Girls weren't fucking on a scamming ass rich ass nigga. You know what girls were doing when I was in school? Nucking if you bucking. That's a whole nother these type of conversation to right fight. there. They was, they trying, they talking about fucking these bitches was. You know how hard it is to work a pussy? I, nigga, after a knuck if you buck, she ready to fight. Whoever make her disrespect Bruh, you better say the fuck, right though. thing. But she, her ponytail still going to be wet when you fuck her. Right, they give you some of that goddamn after party pussy. Oh, yeah, for all time. Go in the bathroom, wipe the pussy off, leave the titty salty, though. You got to mm. suck after party titty. Mm. Heineken sweat. She's sweating that Heineken out now. Ooh, boy. That Heineken salty. Man. Ooh, you got to work through it. That's what I'm saying. You work you through it. fuck the bitch with that Newport neck? Whoa. That's a new one, but whoa. Man, it deserved a woo. I'm not going to let it not get the respect it deserved. Newport neck, nigga. <laughs> Bro, you, you ever fucked the bitch who you really wasn't attracted to? Ah-ha. It's the type of shit niggas do. <laughs> Like she was cool, <laughs> but you wouldn't have put no effort into it. Like ah, Newport neck, kind of fumbling. Hold up, man, we not moving past that, Slim. You got to, you got y'all to, niggas laughing at two got, different things. You got to move on. I said, hey, we can just start with Newport neck. All right, man, you ain't never fuck with a chick who smokes cigarettes. Uh, I mean, come on, not man. enough for a neck to you smell lying, like them. No, man, you done, man, you no. lying. You Maybe lying. I didn't even put enough effort in that, that let me know that her neck smell like cigarettes, but I've never had sex with any woman where I go, God damn, your neck smell like a Newport. That's never happened. All right, man. Well, maybe we just live. Go, just move on. <laughs> I don't even want to tell the rest of that story. Fuck it. Fuck yeah, it, Yeah, that's one of them off-camera ones. I got that. Ooh, that one is a... Ooh. Well, you've never met a bad bitch that likes cigarettes? Like a bad bitch. Yeah, I mean, I've met a lot of them, but I ain't never oh, smelled their neck. Oh, you? Okay. Man, I ain't never smelled their neck, nigga. All that right. that one, I, 
Do but like I was saying, though, you like if a fuck somebody you you wasn't attracted to and the pussy was exceptionally good, like very very good. <laughs> how good was it? It was so good. It was it's very very good. <laughs> but it don't matter how That's good a it is. You, right there. You still. But the thing is, you would still be like, man, if you still you throw it away and be like, if niggas knew how good this pussy was, you don't even think about now that you know. It's not even about keeping it for yourself. Now you like, nigga, if niggas knew. Because you almost didn't know. All right, my bad. Sometimes I go off. Hey, What's man. up, Jenny? What's up, Jenny? Hello, love. What's up, Jackie? Jenny and Jackie. We in this bitch. But yeah, that's that's a very unique conversation. And like I said, we, we hope that we inspire in the way that we intend on inspiring in regards to the hoes being understanding that you are. It's so many so many more things we could discuss now. about that. Bro. Exactly. And that don't mean that, you know, if you and I will say this, if you playing the game. You know what I'm saying? If you in, if you got a girl in a relationship, don't don't ruin the hoes. Don't for the risk it for the hoes, can, man. Yeah, the people who can really be out here with the hoes. Like, don't put the, the hey, stay, you know, or don't do it. Don't that's do just it. My, that's just my Because you opinion. you left the hoes for a reason. Exactly. Whatever caused you to leave the hoes, the hoes always going to be the hoes. But whatever it is you was getting when you said, I'm going to be with this woman and made her believe that you wasn't going to have sex with nobody else, <laughs> was worth more than whatever the hoes provided you. Man, now we got to play devil's advocate, too. It's a lot of niggas out here who have cuffed good hoes and wasting their time. Yeah. You need to free them and let them be who they are, bro. Oh, man. She is a superstar, and you can't can't keep a caged bird, bro. Yeah. I mean, you can try. No, you can't. You can try, but... It's not fair. It isn't, but that's that's the way it goes. It's like you... If you don't mess up the hoes for the dudes who could be out here with them, because if you got a woman that you say you love and all of that, then you need to adhere to that. And she's supposed to hold you to that standard. You ever cuff the hoe? Yeah, once. How you find out she she was a hoe? Like you knew no. she was a hoe, or you found out? I mean, I don't even. I've been in both. I I like I done cuffed a known hoe. And I, I cuffed. But when I did it, it wasn't because I was a sucker-ass nigga. I did it for my own selfish reasons. Right. I was okay. like, she's a hoe. She going to do some fucking. I want to be the one getting most of that pussy. <laughs> okay. So I really didn't. I don't look at it as like cuffing a hoe. I was just the majority stakeholder. Okay. I had sense. most of the stock. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, I didn't know she was a hoe, which speaks to the magnificence. How did you find out? Of women. I found out she was a hoe from somebody that she was hoeing with. Oh, he did. Yeah, he was like, nigga, you fucking with that hoe? I was like, <laughs> you never had that happen. That's your girl? It's like, listen, I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, but damn, what it? He's like, oh, boy, ooh. And that's the thing, you get laughed out about that one. you like, you know what, I need to be a little bit more detailed in my decision-making process. I'm not asking the right questions. That made me realize how good women can conceal shit. Like, they can really put something up under the table. Now, let me ask you this. At this point in your life, do you even want to know if your girl used to be a hoe? Nah, at this point, I can give a fuck. At this point, I can care less. My perspective has changed. You know how, you know, we chop it up. Like, I don't, you know, I don't think the same way in that regard as most people. But now, I can give two fucks if she used to be a hoe. Right. It don't matter what you used to do. I can give two fucks about what you used to do. What are you serving in regards to purpose in my life? If it's sufficient and I'm cool with it, I don't give a fuck what nobody got to say about you. Bro, you remember you earlier you was talking about the old car show, bro. Mm-hmm. Bro, I fuck with the old car. I don't give a fuck how many miles on there, but I put a whole new motor in a bitch. And there it is. And that's you, That's what it is. That's the way you feel, and you don't care about how nobody feel about it. But so. I, feel, I feel like, I, I don't know. It depends on where she was a hoe at. Like, if you was a local hoe, mm-hmm. like in this city that we live in, I don't think I could do that. But if you like you a hoe and you moved here and you starting over, I can respect that. Yeah, I mean, I, that's cool. But you know me, I don't, you know, I ain't trying to be in no relationship. So my Girl, let me ask you this. You ever same. been out with a chick and you and like she spoke to a dude and the energy you just knew that he had fucked? You can feel it. It's the way the high sound. Hey, it's that. <laughs> God damn. It's that. That she, shit gave me flashback. Yeah, because you done did it before. Because hey, hey, he was trying to fuck when you walked back up. And he called, hey. Hey, 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 hey. what's up with you, homes? Nice How you doing? What's up, big dude? Nice to meet you, man. I heard a it's lot a about you. When yeah. the fuck? When? Yeah. I ain't heard shit about you. Listen, man, that's what I'm saying. Like, the, the way, 
learning, going through those processes for me. I hate when a bitch introduced me to a nigga with some cologne on. That's a, that's a. I don't like this nigga off top. That's tough. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, man, fuck this nigga, man. This nigga out here, goddamn, he done hugged your bitch, now she smell like it. And you, get, and you got to ride home. Man, Ooh. open the guy, crack the window. <laughs> you better hope you got some left. And the fucked up part is you know the cologne. Box. I want to smell that. This nigga done impressed my Italy bitch with some hundred dollar Macy's ass cologne. Yeah, that'd make you mad right there. <laughs> And that's the thing. We the hey, type man, of cologne we I'm wear. Petty, I know like, we, I'm petty. Let listen. a bitch give another nigga a compliment while she with me. I don't know how the fuck she getting home. <laughs> Ride with that nigga you said thank you to. God damn, Lo. <laughs> that's tough. Put a lot of pressure. Man, fuck that. You're not about to be out here telling niggas thank you. <laughs> you hey, you know how fucked up that is? You hold the door. Thank you. Well, you, hey, fuck that. You and that nigga. Like, hey, man, hey, man what's wrong with you, Holmes? It's like, mm -mm. damn. I don't that's like, a lot of uh, pressure. Mm -mm. I don't like when I introduce bitches to uh, my partners and they get too excited. Yeah, oh, that, hey, oh that's real. Uh -uh, nah, All the time. Like this bitch, we'll be though. on the phone having conversations. Don't, don't you ever be this goddamn excited to see Chico. We'll have conversations. He'd say that shit all the time. Fuck you so happy to see this nigga it's for. A, I'm like, man, no, you are crazy. You never get this happy. <laughs> you been with me all goddamn day. You see this nigga, you just light the fuck up. You ain't, you, what the fuck you doing missing this nigga? Mm-mm. <laughs> bitch gave Chico a front hug one time. I deleted that bitch number. Don't be front hugging my partners, bitch. You side hug, nigga. One arm. <laughs> Bitch out here talking about put her arms around his neck. Hey, Chico. Bitch, we don't share pussy. Yeah, we definitely don't. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's not don't never do. be that excited to be see no nigga I know. Hey, mm. Carlos, you got to do the training video to let bitches know about that. Yeah. <laughs> you got to let them know. A lot of y'all are ruining your opportunity mm, over some shit that's totally avoidable. Because no. I don't give a fuck if you like me when Man, you see me. don't you let that Especially if you with him. You can not say a word to me. Yeah. I, hey, it's still going to be my partner. So, she out yeah, here letting teach niggas the hold the dough for and shit. Huh? She out here letting niggas hold the dough for and shit. I mean... Hey. Fuck she going doing all this yoga and going to the gym for bitch you strong open your own goddamn door. That's tough. I'll be letting niggas be cordial to you. <laughs> That's I, a I got movie you sweetheart. Right there, Who the fuck you call it? That's sweetheart? a movie right there. You walk around the corner and seeing your your girl walking out the door that's being held for by another nigga. Whoa, nigger. whoa, hey, was she good? <laughs> you can let that go. <laughs> bro, you ever been introduced to a nigga, he tried to squeeze your hand hard. Hey, bro, hey, bro, fuck out, bro, hey. Man, that'd be Cut all that comic book of, shit out, my nigga. A lot of you niggas smack holes through mattresses. I don't know how you got your... Man, we be shaking hands with people. Some of these dudes be like, what's up, Chico? You like, yeah, all right, nigga. All right, what are you trying to prove right now? Yeah, see? You can't, you're like, see, that's why niggas be getting shot and shit. Leave motherfuckers alone. Big strong hand motherfucker. Just be, how you doing? Not better than I was before I shook your hand, strong man. The hand, God damn. It's crazy. You be letting bitches introduce you as their homeboy? Nah. I don't believe in male-female <laughs> friendship like that. I feel like the only way a man doesn't want to have sex with a woman is if he don't like pussy. Bruh, I asked my homeboy this shit. This nigga gave me the funniest answer, bruh. Shout What's out that? to Chris Smokey John. I said, bruh, can a man and a woman ever be friends? Uh -huh. Guess what this nigga said? What he said? He said, yeah. If that nigga in a wheelchair... <laughs> Someone has to question. I feel like we gotta break a double type of. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't. We had to go to commercial, man. We gotta go to commercial. Put the put the blue chew commercial up right now. I don't want people to see me react like this. Ooh, I'm trying to hold it back. Come on, man, cut the camera off, huh? Ah. Oh. <laughs> He said that shit. He said that. Man. I don't know if I, I don't know if I've ever agreed more. Hey man. And it's it's fucked up. Cause it's, I mean, that's the good I, I don't know. I just don't understand. I, I've never i I've never been around personally any man who has been like, that's my homegirl, unless it's really somebody that's family to him. Like the thought of even seeing her naked has to repulse you. Like, ugh, stop playing with me. 
or I don't it's think been I, I don't somebody think I, he is <clears throat> around because he a fuck and he hasn't. And I'm cool with not fucking because I'm already fucking. But if you ever give me the opportunity to fuck, I'm going to fuck. How important is fucking as a man? If you had to put a percentage on it. A percentage? Right. In regards to the male ego? No, I'm just, it's to survival. Survival? To Ooh. How important is fucking to living? To living? i probably say, I don't know what the percentage that the heart and the brain do, but as a man after that, is 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 that that percentage? Whatever the brain and the, and the heart do, that's I say that's fifty percent. The other fifty percent is your ability to be able to fuck. Everything that a man <coughs> does is for fucking. Like you think about the reason why you have to be successful as a man. Bro, like, I don't want to be successful if I can't get no pussy. Exactly, that ain't success. Like what type of success have you achieved where you can't get no pussy? Like all, like you. I mean, ask what are you man, doing that you're successful man, that women are man, not giving right, you pussy? Any man that is being honest with you, if you ask him, "Hey, man, today you can have a billion dollars, but for the rest of the time you're alive, you can never get no pussy again." Man, don't nobody need that. Money don't nobody that need money. that money. <laughs> like you can keep that money. Don't I nobody need that much goddamn money. I man. used to eat ravioli nightly for dinner. I know how to survive without a billion dollars. Once I start getting pussy, I ain't learn how to survive with pussy without pussy, and I'm not trying to figure it out, Bruh. Like no, it's just, it's just is it's important because as a man, that's what you work towards. We get shit. I remember when. You get, you know, people always post memes about getting that fresh shape up. What does that really mean? That means, nigga, I look good for the bitches. They going to love me when they see me with the fresh shape up. Or my dress twisted. Or me with this new shirt on. Or in this new car. Or in this new house. Or anything. Because if it was just niggas that could see you do all of the things that you do as a man that success is attached to, doesn't hold the same value. It's like, yeah, I mean, you can sit around and watch a motherfucker sit around and throw money on other niggas if you like, but I'm not really trying to, you know, be a part of that because we're not going to be able to serve no purpose in regards to what pleasure is the way pussy means to a man. So it's just, I think it's very important. It's very, very important, 50%. Because if you can't do it, then, ooh, in the wheelchair. You think rappers get a lot of pussy? Uh, I, I think it's perceived that rappers get a lot of pussy, yeah. Whether or not they do or not is up for debate. Like this shit. Mm-mm. I only know about the pussy I get. Mm. That's all I'm concerned with is the pussy that's for me. All the other you pussy. You alright? You you eating? Oh yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm good. <clears throat> nah, ain't no hate. I, bro, I be so excited when I know my nigga about to get yeah. some pussy. I, I be hyping them up, bro. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, Women can hype up their friend. Yeah, I be exactly. like, go get a champ. Yep. Put that dick on her. The whole thing. Hit me when you get back if you're still alive. Because right. I like to check to make, make sure, sure they you're still alive. Because yeah. a lot can happen when you leave some pussy. Right. They ain't going. So it's like, but yeah, I feel you. You know what I mean? And you're supposed to get excited about that. Because you, like we talking about, it's just, it's something that as a man, you got to be able to attain by living your life the way you're supposed to live it. That right. pussy is the, the criteria for getting some pussy. Whatever that may be, it's very strategic and it's adhered to. Point blank period. You got to have uh, something going on with yourself. You got to have ambition. You got to take care of yourself. You got to not be a fucked up person, at least on the outer shell. Bro, see, so you be getting so intelligent. Stay, look, I be don't forget about the 85 percenters. Tell the niggas who don't know about the ambition, bro. <clears throat> the ambition of what? Getting some pussy? No, I'm just saying, how important is it for a nigga to have some ambition? Oh, yeah, the ambition. The importance of ambition. This really ambition an audio book. Is just, the ambition is important because that's at, at certain points in your life, that's all you had as a man was the ambition to be cool. When you first start getting pussy, whatever age that was, when you start, like you said, getting out here and wanting some, your ambition was probably what you were standing on, whatever it is you aspire to be. So the fact that... You had that was enough for you to get some pussy. But as you get older, you lose that ambition because you're trying to attach your success to some shit that somebody else told you to do. But if you got the ambition to still be cool enough to chase whatever it is you want to chase, then some pussy going to come with that at all times. Bruh, if you stay true to it. Have so, you ever noticed that most drug addicts aren't single? Yep. 
we met a dude the other day who girlfriend had just broke up with him, but she had found a wild and out shirt and she wore it every night. But he was sad because they broke up. The homeless dude. But he had a girlfriend. It's niggas Why out here. Why do you think that that's the case? I don't know. I was just thinking that. But you meet a lot of drug addicts or you see a lot of drug addicts and they don't never really be single like that. <clears throat> every drug addict got a little drug addict partner. Hmm. Male or female, they ride around together looking for drugs. I mean, yeah, that's true. Why do you and think that is? And they be together is, until somebody go to jail. Yeah, why do you think that is, though? I think drugs make your love stronger. Okay, and why is that? Because it's probably easier to find drugs when it's two of y'all. Yep. Yep. And you connected on something that y'all really have bonded on together. Like this Bro, is not a situation lie, where y'all have a bitch lying. Smoke crack, right? You? Yeah, exactly. You you can't do that. You can't lie and to crack. A, make you honest, baby. I'm honest sorry. as a motherfucker. I'm sorry, baby. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm fucked up. Okay. Fuck it. Don't worry about it. They both be over there, mm -hmm. high as hell, in love, hugging. It's okay. It's okay. You be okay. Yeah. We are gonna make it. Exactly. We are gonna get through this. Mm-hmm. And get off this shit too. But the they make promises to each other. Forget about it. I'm sure that's it. Mm. That's a very good analogy, because you really do see a lot of people who don't have a home have a partner. That's how you know pussy but is important, though, because even crackheads know to keep something around. Mm-hmm. It don't matter. 50%. Drugs that made you forget everything else. Forget you need a house. Forget you don't you even need talk a car, to your family. Forget you need a job. Forget you got a family. But it don't make you forget that you want some pussy. That's crazy. Tell you how I know pussy was powerful. How you know? I was watching TV. You remember Scandal? Yeah. Remember when they shot the president in the head? Yeah. He was in a coma for about three episodes. Okay. Only thing that made that nigga come out that pussy, I mean out that coma, is when he started thinking about Olivia Pope and making love to her. I said, you know that's some good pussy to bring him up yeah. for God. Out of coma? Ooh. From being shot in the head, too. Ooh, that's a strong man. Didn't die. Didn't die. Because had he had sex with her before that point? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well yeah. That's a that's a powerful. I used piece to watch that show right and there. just argue with every scene. White man getting all that pussy. I'm a hater. Yeah, I already know. <laughs> if you mad at all the white door, dude. then I know I'm you mad. I'm gonna admit it. I'm gonna put it. Out. I only hate on white men though. Oh yeah. They got that's everything. Good. They got a lot. They need to be hated on a little bit. They don't do shit, but I just you know I yeah. hate. Yeah. But only in the privacy in my own home. I don't be outside hating. Not even in my yard. Never publicly. But Never when I'm watching hate, TV, no anything hate. on TV to me is fair game. Oh yeah. Like I don't I don't blame nothing on TV on like regular folks. Cause like I don't even think the white people that's outside are like the ones who really run shit. I just I know it's a whole nother set of them. But they be trying to act like they are. Like it ain't even you. You don't run shit. Dirty ass <laughs> truck. Huh. You ain't, you're not even the you're not even the fuck you. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the old white dude that they keep in the back of the White House who come out and make all the laws. Tell them to drive 55. Why? Why we still got a fucking speed limit? When you put it in that term, everybody's a hater. Because you think it don't matter who you are. You got some shit that you hate. It don't, it's some shit that you hate. We just shouldn't hate on each I other. Hate but we all are haters. I hate the motherfuckers who made the shit possible. What you mean? Like the motherfuckers who in in charge. Like the motherfuckers who signed the abortion bill. They right. ain't asked nobody. You gotta ask somebody. These are all old motherfuckers that can't have babies and shit anyway. Yeah, I mean. You ever think about this shit? Yeah, I mean, it's that that would come with power though. So I can understand the hate on the white man because it's like you know that what power it is, is real. You got all white men with no mustache are evil. Ooh. If you ever meet a white man with no facial hair and no top lip, man, get the fuck away from him. Something bad about to happen, man. This nigga is crazy, man. Meet a white man with no facial hair and no top lip. He fucked up, man. That's Some bad crazy. shit bound to happen. Hey, this nigga said no top lip, no facial hair. But that top lip is gone. <laughs> white men don't fuck with that facial hair, do they? Nah, well, not a lot. But some of them look strange with it. Like, they, you just get to looking real creepy. You got that serial killer vibe going on with the facial hair. Cause this is, it's, ooh. I'm talking about the facial structure. Like we got a dude that we see all the time. I'm talking about he got the full white man. And it's like, man, you look like a wildling. It's crazy. 
Let me tell you how you know what a white man is enjoying his life. When he had a fucking ponytail. Which one? When he Which bald one? at the top and he got just got the ponytail. Oh, man. That the, white man the, 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 threw the, some the, shit. Uh, the Trevor from Grand Theft Auto? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah bro. If you see travel from Grand Theft, that's a unique haircut. You got bro, to at say some that point one. of every every all of them have a ponytail, and they just tell you stories about shit they did while they was growing this motherfucker. <laughs> really happened. <coughs> you all right? Yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm always good. Shout out to everybody who fucks with the '85 South Show. You are a very unique, kind individual, a given individual. Go to the website, 85southshow.com. Buy your tickets to whatever show's coming up in your city. Yep. Chad, you bullshitting, man. You got to add Philly to the rotation. Yeah, gotta, Philly. Got to add Oakland to the rotation. Got to, we got so many places we got to add. Gotta add to Oakland all the to people the who have been supporting us and requesting us, we hear you, and we are coming. I promise you that. It's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we have not spoke on because we don't need you all up in our goddamn business. But just know that moves are being made and to shit like that. City near you. We coming. Shout out to City Trends for believing in us. Yeah. Thank you for that. You know they believe. Don't look at me like that, Chad. I know this. I know this is free promotion, but we fuck with City Trends and we rebuilding the community one outfit at a time. Exactly. Speak on it, Chico. Baby. Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing, man. It's just, you know, I remember what it felt like to have to make something out of nothing. We all know. How long I've been telling you to do this shit? Oh, for a long time. Cause like we were just talking about having that ambition. That ambition is what keeps me confident. That ambition that I never lost keeps me confident in whatever I have on. Cause I'm confident yeah. about the fact that I meet. So it doesn't matter what you're wearing. It just matter who's inside of the clothes that you wear. So that's just well, just know is. that I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna show you on this city trends challenge, man. You ain't the only one. I mean, hey, listen, I, I want to see it. That's, that's why point. we open it up I to the fans. I want the people to bro. show that listen, it's possible to go, and it ain't something you even got to do every day. Right. But if you a flat person, you consider yourself to be flat, and go to city trends and Make put something. something together. Right. Go to City Trends and put something together right. just to show that it's possible for the people who can't afford to. I Give saw this young motivation. dude on the gram who went to Walmart and bought some of them like designer like Walmart shoes they had. Uh -huh. Put all these fits together and did a little photo shoot. I don't know the young man's name, but he's a very talented individual for making that shit he is. look yeah. expensive, man. Exactly. It's just whatever it is. It's That's the new wear. fresh, man, making shit look expensive. Exactly. You gotta put your own sauce on. And it don't matter. It's like you could be around somebody with something on that's expensive and it doesn't look expensive because they don't wear it with the confidence that's necessary to make it look the way it's supposed to. That's why you have a lot of these brands that don't respect our dollar and don't respect our purchase and respect who we are in regards to what we buy because they don't respect the fashion sense in us and the confidence comes with the fashion sense. That's what brings confidence. You can learn to work something. You, you know what I mean? I always give examples when it comes to getting fly like people. I like the, the way that people embrace whatever it is that they wear. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't dress like Andre 3000 dresses, but Andre 3000 is fly to me. Because if you see him, you're not going to be worried about whatever outfit he got on. You're just going to be appreciative of the fact that you're in his presence. And whatever he got on is a reflection of who he is. So. He probably going to have on some overalls. Overall. The same. But thing. that's what I'm saying. Like, it, 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 for him in overalls, he wear that and he Andre 3000. So it's like you can find that passion within yourself to be able to be whoever you're supposed to be without somebody motivating you to do it. You know who don't get a, enough uh, respect for being fresh? Who is that? The fat dudes. Uh, it's some fat dudes out here. They get respect from me. Bro, it's some fat dudes out here that's fresh as hell. They get respect And I don't know me, where they finding these big ass fresh clothes from. Hey, my uncle But they do. Shout out to all, all, the, all the big dudes. Dude. And he was fly. I'm talking about super fly. And fat dudes, like, it depend on where you came up in. Because when them jerseys was big, the big jerseys, man, listen, it's a 9X jersey. I look, you look ridiculous. You look ridiculous, man. You're 165 pounds, but you got on a 6X. I'm talking about it look like a whole gown on you. But big boys, they'll fill them out. And you're like, oh, that's what that jersey's supposed right. to look like. Because they it's, it's a certain type of fresh only a fat boy can get right you're not gonna look and it's just and it's the same as you gotta know your body type because there's some shit that skinny niggas is gonna look good in it big boys just you some of them nike shirts big fellas they ain't made for that 
Your Nike sign is wide open. I'm talking about from here to here. That ain't the one, but it is some shit out there for you, and be confident enough to go find it. If I was a big nigga, I would never wear nothing with the word big on it. Unless it was the notorious big. That's it. If you a big nigga, why would you wear a shirt with another big nigga on it? <laughs> Now some shit just need to be left alone. So it's where do, where do you get your inspiration for how you present you? Because you somebody who I respect as well in regards to the way you put it together. People don't Check understand. Check this out. I like that when you put your shoes up on Instagram. And I was like, yeah, that's right. Let's just show them. You know, even though you might not be the person that show off or, you know, your shoes or whatever. Yeah, I got it. It's, it's available if necessary. I appreciate that. Now this, you know what? I've always had the perception of my idea of just moving about the world. Said, that shit don't matter. I always felt like these motherfuckers don't like me anyway. So fuck it. I've never had to have one of those moments of clarity in life to be accepted or embraced. I've always been an individual, though. You know, you see how many shoes I have. Now I might wake up one day and just throw my goddamn cowboy boots on just because I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck what people think because people don't think. What a nigga look like sitting around forming an opinion on me? You a grown man. Who gives a fuck? They're not going to do nothing. What are going to do? Kick me out? Get mad? Get mad? All the fuck you. People get mad at me more than anything. Give a shit. I'm mad. I'm mad that you mad at me for not goddamn playing your fuck you. I wear what the fuck I want to wear. Nigga, sometimes I just wake up and put a costume on me. I do. I just walk around my house with a Versace robe with a oh, pistol yeah. in the pocket and just act like somebody coming to get me. I just be in character sometimes, bro. I don't give a fuck. I'm just a drug lord. Walk around my house, people around the corner. You are the drug lord of your house. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I feel you. Mine I'm always, Montana something. Mine always came from just the people I was influenced by. I saw how, you know, how passionate they were about the way that they looked. No matter what the circumstances was, they always made sure that they looked good. Clean and neat, you know what I mean? Right. Always clean and neat, no matter what. No matter what you're dealing with and no matter what you're going through, be able to walk out. If you're gonna go outside, make sure that you can be clean and neat when you do. If you have sound-minded body. So right. I just always appreciated that aspect of them, no matter what they was going through. And it didn't matter at what point. I what but uh, I've seen, you know, my uncle come home from jail and have nothing and walk outside with the jail suit on, literally the pair of Tim's, and people was like, ah, that's what, you be, that's what we doing today. And it was just something that it didn't matter whatever position right. they was in. That's exactly they all, what I'm he saying. He was clean and neat. He, he looked the way he was supposed to look. So that's just always where I've got that passion for just, and it, and it doesn't matter what I have on. I got, you know, see what we got on right now. Black t-shirt, yeah, black nice. pair, Nike sweatpants, and some, just some Nikes. But I can go outside dressed like this and be able to conduct business. I do it all the time. I don't have to have on anything flashy, but I'm still clean and neat. I wear what the fuck I want to. I but just, you clean when you leave the house, yeah, ain't you? I always make sure my shit neat and shit like that. Man. Exactly. And then you always make sure. And another important thing, fellas, get you some investing cologne. Hey, I, I challenge you to do this. Don't buy the next pair of Jordans. Spend the money that you was going to spend on some Jordans and go get you some cologne that cost them. Ain't no need in looking good if you don't smell good. You know what I mean? Go take whatever whatever the next pair of J's you was going to buy. Hold off on those because you can probably. You probably got them just stacked up. Just you can hold off on one of those. And go I tell you, man, my nice Jordan place. don't give a fuck how many pair you get. Go to a place and buy you some cologne, some valuable cologne, man, and see how that changed the way you feel about yourself when you start hearing how them, because women appreciate that, because they'll smell you coming before they you even open your mouth. They're going to smell it before they, before you say anything. They're going to smell that cologne, man. Some shit that actually smell good, man. Some shit that you like, not some shit somebody told you. Exactly. To go Cause out. you might just be a different type of nigga, and that shit don't even smell right on but you. But at least go and see what it is. You know what I mean? Cause you all still that shit find don't smell something. good on there. But I'm saying you still gonna find something that is for you, and you might even end up coming up on something that ain't gonna cost you with the joint. You might still be able to get the joint, but you put yourself in a position where you went and got something 
and smell good. Right. You know what I mean? You and that's you can have on anything. You can just have on a plain sweatsuit. If you smell good, you're gonna get some compliments. From everybody. Oh my, old women, you smell so nice. I love old women. You smell so good. You know why good. I love old women? Close, they, let me ask you a question. They have a different appreciation for men. How does it make you like we was talking about that when 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 the, the, you know the girl give you some pussy and your friend talk about it and all that? How does it make you feel when a woman come up on you and be like, "Oh my God, you just give you a hug and you sm- you smell so good." What does that make you feel about your ability to purchase fragrances? You know what? I feel like Jordan in Game Six mm. because that's exactly what I did this for. It may not have been her. In particular, but just like we were saying earlier, I went with hoes in mind. I like this. So hopefully the hoes will too. And that's it, man, listen, we we are we are connoisseurs of of cause I would say, wouldn't you say that yes, we are connoisseurs yeah. of fine fragrances, of all fragrances. Of all from from what, what we call it, your high end to your low end. You gotta have some fresh ass low end shit too. Good low end. And then the low end boy, you got some classics that's low end. It that ain't gonna cost you more than a hundred dollars. It might not even cost you fifty dollars for the bottle. But if you go and actually, you know, take the time out, and it's the thing when you get your cologne, fellas, don't just smell it on the car. Put a little bit on your skin, let it dry, see what it smell like when you let it sit on you. Cause some shit might smell good on the car. You put it on, you make it smell like pop. Right. If that shit don't got that comeback that make you keep smelling it, I ain't fucking. With yeah, it got the man. It's important, you know what I mean? That right there changes your entire outfit. You know what I mean? Because once you start getting those compliments, then the confidence is going to go up regardless. It don't matter what you got on. You're going to have a a suit from wherever on. If the women come up to you, oh, my God, you smell so good. You smell good, are you? Ladies, stop wearing that old lady perfume, too. (laughs) Man, that motherfucker hugged me the other day, and I'm smelling like Mildred. Mildred. That shit got in my mouth. I couldn't. Mildred. I'm like, ugh, this is that disgusting. Is a, that is an original that name. That smell like right dandelions or daffodils Milk. or some stupid ass shit. I was highly upset about that. Yeah, I bet you were. Yeah, that shit fucking You had to go take a shower and get that off. Yeah, man. Did me bad that time. I said, you know, these are just little tips, like you said, that help you keep that ambition that we was talking about. You know, the little pieces. You got to build your confidence up. got to build your confidence. And the way you smell, man, is clean and neat, man, that's the... That's the perspective. As long as you can be clean and neat, then you can get some. You can get somewhere if you got some type of hustle about you. Let me uh, let me talk. Let's speak on this, man, because a lot of people be hitting us with these inspiring, touching, has messages about how they love the '85 South show, how we help them get through this and that and that. Right? Show them love right now. Oh, what would man. you want to say to those people? Somebody might be listening to this right now who may be going through something. We appreciate the fact that y'all are willing to. Let us know how we affect your life in such a personal way. We are strangers to you in regards to, you know, y'all knowing us personally. But what we do makes you feel comfortable enough with us to let us know something that you got through that you didn't think that you would even be able to get through to a total stranger. So for us to be able to produce something to give y'all that grace, we appreciate you, man. And I would just like to say thank you for letting 85 South Show be your medicine, your free therapy, to let us be the ones who, you know, fill an empty space. You feel like ain't nobody there, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just need to hear somebody's voices, you know, a little positive. Help you, help you get to the next day. And right. Hopefully God give you another one and you can get to it. That's what I'm saying. Like, Man, it's if like, you're going through some shit and you listen to this, just keep going. Just it. keep going. Whatever it is, man, it might be this This little tough time might be the setup for something great. Great. Don't give up on it. How many times have you survived tough times, Carlo? Shit. All of them. Exactly. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, boy, motherfucker just don't know. The shit I've been through, uh, uh, fuck the average nigga. Up. The, the average nigga, the average one, ain't even built to deal with the shit that I had to deal with. I feel you. Nigga, carburetor would have went out of something. So we would have needed some new parts. Yeah, I feel you. I feel the same way. And I think that's what makes us the type of people that people can appreciate these messages from. You know what I mean? Like, we understand what it means to go through shit. And the fact that we went through the shit that we went through is what has us sitting in this chair today. And 
whatever chair you supposed to end up sitting in, you'll never know if you let it overcome you. So keep man. your head up, man. Work through it. It's a possible. lot of people today, man, that shit, that shit does get, your head does get heavy sometimes. Real heavy. But I've spent a lot of time, I and mean, I've had a lot of times where I just had to sit there and didn't even say shit. I just had to think. Yeah. It, was, it just wasn't even no words for the type of sh- you know what I mean, for the feeling. You didn't want to talk. You just had to think. Sometimes you just need to break off and do your own shit and, and clear your space, man. Man, it's, it's important. Happen. I do it as often as possible because you got to be able to navigate them thoughts. Most of the shit that you are worried about is potential things that have not occurred. That's yeah. where most of the worry comes from in your life, the things you're thinking about that could happen. And you create your own fear, you bro. You create your own fear and then That's you real. create your own energy that you live in based on that fear. So you're not going to be able to see the results of happiness because you're not walking in it. You got to be able to get to a point where you can clear your mind out and just think and be able to know what's real and what's not so you don't end up out here worried about what people think. You know what That's I mean? That's for real. Fuck what people think about you. If you ain't hurting nobody, man, be who you are. Be yourself. Stand on it. You know, you're, your world opens up differently. And you won't get to that point if you allow yourself to be struck down by hard times. Because hard times is, you know, hard times is hard times. Everybody done been through it in some way, shape, or form. But everybody ain't got through it. Yeah, don't let that shit way. break you is all I'm saying. Don't let that shit break you, man. Can't do it. Don't let it. Y'all ready? We got to wrap this up. Everybody's getting anxious in this bitch. All right, bet, man. See, Chad looks like he sleep standing up. He is, man. Chad he is. Fell asleep standing straight up. This deep though. This is the 85 South Show. Shout out to the 85 percenters. All of y'all that posting all those dope been, ass clips. And, man, watching so, us and appreciating bro, can you believe the nerve of us. our fans, man? This is the type of fans we have for this show. Bro, these motherfuckers got a Facebook group with like 50,000 people in it. Didn't even invite us. I had to ask to be in it. You had to ask to I be had in the 85 South Show. Bro, they got pictures of, of, of us that we don't even have. <laughs> Nigga, they posted your high school picture. Damn. Nigga, that's how many fans we have, bro. They can get pictures of us that we can't get because they know people that know people that know us. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. That's crazy when you think about that. That's wild. Think of all the people we took pictures with that ain't posted them yet. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck they holding them on. The niggas be having Over the nerve the to post the shit and not tag us in. I don't know what the fuck. I be I kind of get reserved to take pictures. I don't know these people. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. All it take is a caption, and now people looking at us on some bullshit. Uh, Ran into my nigga Carlos today. We went in there and robbed that bank. We got the boy. No, the fuck we didn't. That's the nature of the internet, man. You can't even subscribe to that. Cause you take like, a picture with a chick, she get right online. They always showing up, like, he's so sweet. You, yeah, you got to just let that live in the day. You can't even address it. Don't address it. Don't address nothing that ain't real. Don't even address it, because once you address it, it become real. You got to let that nigga, flow. If, nigga, a lot of shit that's fake is real. Explain that's what that. Pe- man, nigga, what? Explain that. I don't have to. That shit is self-explanatory. It's a lot of fake shit that's real. It's real. I'm telling you, fake is real. Nigga, if you can put your hands on it and touch it, that shit is real. I'm telling you, I've seen it happen to all the greats. All the greats. Nigga, no evidence. Fake shit can be real at any moment. I'm t- Man, look how many people out here selling fake real shit. Nigga, it's a whole it's a whole company that done blew up selling fake real shit. Yeah. Fake real shit. That's crazy. A lot of fake real shit. Nigga, fake love. A fake love, man. Nah, yeah. That's fake real. Yeah. Cause a motherfucker love the fuck out you as long as they can see you. But as soon as you gone, I love them type of people. Hate me when I'm gone. Do it. Because you got to get that shit out your system, man. I feel like haters like social boo-boo. If you don't boo-boo, you going you to be locked up, bro. Get it out. Because it don't really affect me. I know who don't like me. Okay. I know what they say and who they say it to. Because it's like, I have a long reach. So I don't give a fuck who you think you comfortable saying this shit to. 
Ain't no secrets in the world, man. It's, and when people say fucked up shit about you and you not that type of person, that that make them want you to know that, hey, man, motherfucker said this. Yeah. Especially when you, like I said, that's that keeps you from having to address shit like that when taking pictures with people. Because... Ain't nobody gonna believe that shit. Nah, I address it. You know what I mean? I look, I'll be asking all type of shit. People come up to me and ask me for random shit. I ask them anything you ask me, I'm asking you back. If you greet me with a question, I'm gonna greet you with one back. Are you Carlos Miller? I don't know who's looking for him. Anybody ever told you you look? Anybody ever told you you shouldn't be out here asking people questions? <laughs> that probably make them running into you even more special. Cause it's, Direct contact now. You just ask them something. Now they get to give you an answer. Oh, he talking to me. So I get it. Hey, man. It's rude as fuck to just go up to people and start asking them questions. I mean, that's what come with it, man. That's the fame. Fame make people who don't know you act like they know you forever. Man, I'm not forever. famous. I mean, hey. I ain't famous. Ah, okay. Yes, I don't you know. ain't fucking fa- I ain't yes, accepting that shit. Okay. We, I'm famous? Yes. How you know? How do I know you famous? Yeah. You want me to tell you how I know you Tell famous? me how you know. I tell you, I know you famous because I've seen things happen that most people would never believe if you told them. I'm talking about shit that you would not believe is real. Happen because you, Carlos Miller, I've witnessed those moments. I've witnessed those Maybe moments. Maybe I'll just be overlooking them. Yeah, I think you do. Do I? Yeah. If you think you ain't famous, you definitely overlooking them. Man. Cause I be thinking of people who really famous. Nah, but now nah, you can't buy you. Know, you can't base it on what nobody else fame is. You nah, famous? I'm talking about that's my gauge of fame. I mean, with, your gauge is respectable, but don't you can't say you're not famous. Yes, you are. I don't know. Yeah, yes, you are. I don't let, nah, don't do that. Too. I be thinking about that shit. I don't know if I'm. I think social media fucked it up. Yeah. They tried to put a number on how famous I am. I'm way more famous than that. Okay, so you can say that. I don't know what you the fuck famous. Take, I don't know what's taking all these people who know me to fucking link up. But goddamn it, I'm supposed to have about six million followers or something. I done took pictures with all the followers that I got on everything. I ran into each and every one of them to the point where they showing me old pictures. Bro, you remember? I don't remember that shit. I don't remember nothing. I'm not walking around holding on to memories with strangers. You don't remember me, do you? What the fuck happened that's gonna make me remember you? Oh, I came to the show in Huntsville. You were sitting in the back. You act like they gave me a guest book with everybody who be at these goddamn shows. Carlos, you shouldn't say shit like that. That's gonna make people not come to the show. Nigga, and people, it's some other people who laughing at your goof ass who gonna come. I got to go see this nigga now. This nigga crazy. <laughs> So I just replaced your goof ass with somebody with some fucking sense. <laughs> but I'm famous, I can't say that. I mean, hey, you can do what the fuck you want to do because you famous. Man, fuck man, You the work to get famous, so hey, it I don't know. matter. The you bruh. the work to get famous. Man. I don't, I don't know. know. Or ever diminish I'm a, I'm a, your greatness. I'm going to fuck around and say the wrong shit. You know what I mean? Because you can't even be a comedian no more and say the wrong shit. All this shit ain't going to be correct. Everything is wrong now. We talked about hoes for a good 20 minutes. Yeah. And that shit was important to me. Very much so. I mean, it is what it is. That's what come with it. You know what I mean? That's what come with it. That's what come what with else? it. What else? I ain't even got nowhere where I can go even hear about hoes for that long. That's what I'm saying. It's, that is, it's a fucking demand for that. You know what I mean? The niggas are sitting around like, man, I really wish I had something that was... Well, they was talking about some hoes. Well, here's the 85 South Show. There you go. A podcast for niggas who just want to hear about the hoes sometimes. 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 It is. Put the, the sometimes. God damn. You got to hear about the hoes. You just hearing about them. You ain't even doing nothing with them. Sometimes you but just the need to hear about the hoes. conversation so enticing. To, to just to let you know that the hoes are still out here operating at full strength. Man, it's some hoes who sitting around listening sometimes. to this like, oh, I wish I knew some real ass niggas like that so I could be a hoe around them. And I want them to know it's hope still. Yep. And that's the thing, bro. That's what I mean. Like, I, when I say I've seen situations that happen. Hey, like, bro, you remember we was we was leaving the, uh, uh, the basketball game, the all-star game, walking down the street in New York. This was years ago. And we looked up and had a mom following us. Like, for real. Man, ain't nobody going to believe that story, man. See? What I just we say, literally what did I say before, 100 motherfuckers just I, what following did I say us before, down the street. I've witnessed the things happen that most people wouldn't believe. I've been there. You can't, can't diminish that, man. I've seen it happen. 
I, you know, I embrace the fact that we've done what we've done in regards to up until this point because everybody. Nigga, Snoop Dogg told us we should have been some rappers. Exactly. Snoop Dogg. One, two. That nigga that looked one. at us and said, Y'all niggas ain't rappers yet. Real talk. Didn't he say that shit? That, and he looked like he was serious as fuck. He, he was it. like, Y'all niggas ain't rappers yet? Y'all niggas should be rappers. And walk the fuck out. Then that was all he said. We was walking in and he was walking out. It was Snoop by himself and no security and shit. At the BT shit. That was like four, five years ago. Yeah, it was about five years. That's what I'm saying. Like those type of moments that we've had happen. And that's what makes me I take pictures with people when they come up on me because it's like. Nigga, we're taking some pictures with somebody who's gonna be way more famous than us. I don't know who the fuck it is. Yeah. I just know that. We really show people love. I mean, you know. Cause we're respectful people, you know what I mean? And, and I can say that for me and for him. We walk you respect. better say it for me, cause I can get real disrespect. Yeah, we walk in respect, so if you're a respectful but I ain't, person, I don't you're disrespect really a fan. People and and you're really somebody who appreciate what we do, we appreciate you, so you know what I mean? That's just what it is. Cause you don't have to like this shit. You don't. You could've easily not liked it, but for you to fuck and with it. And it wasn't a lot like of no fly by not shit. Like it. Right, yeah. it wasn't no fly by shit. Nah. Like they liked it and they kept watching it. Yeah. Like we got some loyal, dedicated folks. And that's why we only can be dedicated to those people. We're not directing no attention to something that ain't gonna. See, we got to fire that young nigga. He's sleeping shit, bro. That's how it happens. He's the youngest one in here, the yeah. sleepiest one. He thinks somebody gonna pick him up and carry right, him to his go bed. Back to go back go to back sleep. sleep. You sleep on the job. You don't want no money. It's good. Go ahead, go how back the fuck you sleepier than us? We've been working harder than you. Yeah, you, 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 you go ahead. You yeah. Only wanna like, so when we go to the show, nigga, you sleepy. Get you some rest. He is getting him some rest. Now sleep. Nah, he gonna be sleepy when it's time to go. When it's time to go do the other thing. Now nah, go to sleep. Look at him, caught his little ass napping. He put the hoodie on like we don't think he was mad. Man, this nigga DM me on Twitter like I had left him. Lost what we doing, man? When the show? My <laughs> nigga. Yeah, man. It's my young hitter. I think I went to school with his big sister or something. I don't know. I don't know what this young nigga next to me. People better stop DMing me. That's what I'm saying. I'm too generous. I just be giving everything I have away. <laughs> nigga hit me with a beautiful story. I'm moving to Atlanta from Columbus, man. That's how he said it. That's, That's how you how read, read it in your message. mind. Like he said, if anything you need, man, just let me know. Let's link up, man. Let's get some work in. It's like this young nigga sound ambitious, man. Yeah, like he, ooh. That I, hit him joint. With, I hit him with the old shit. Ain't no money involved. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be some great opportunity. Big red from the five heartbeats. <laughs> Start asking them shit that didn't have to do with photography. You got three black t shirts, a pair of black boots, three pair of black jeans. You ain't gonna need that shit. I'll just watch Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up part about this whole podcast right now, Chico, is we just show so much love to the hoes. Mm -hmm. The ladies gonna be mad. Mm -hmm. The women gonna be upset. We, address, we made brother sure bitches to gonna cuss us out. Right. We made sure to address that before we even got into the I conversation know. that this was. But that's exactly what I'm saying. Like I don't give a fuck in the moment, but then I start going back and I be like, damn, we forgot about the bitches. No, we didn't. We addressed everybody. You know what I mean? We addressed everybody. We didn't forget about anyone. But the bitches can be the hoes too. Yeah, definitely. I done seen the bitches turn right into the hoes. So the ladies can be the hoes too. They, I've they seen, just be the hoes for but they, the thing, Ladies uh, be hesitant. Lady in they the have streets, to make the decision. Freaking the sheets. They have to make the decision to turn the turn the hoe on. Like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, freaking the sheets. I don't want to do no hoe shit. They'll tell you right before they give you the pussy. Look at you. Got me out here on some hoe shit. They laughing too hard. But that mean the hoe is in is is there to be assessed at whatever point she chooses to. So, you know what I mean? Respect to everybody. We yeah. appreciate it all. You think damn that that's too hypothetical right there. What's that? You have you think you ever lost some pussy by being too nice? Like you was you ain't like you you know how you be in the pussy lottery. You you think you ever been like up for some pussy and was just, you blew it by being too nice? Probably. Oh, Mr. Nice Guy is. Yeah. Friendly. When you when you hate Can to I find help out, you? 
Uh, yeah, one of them, nah. Yeah, I, I can say that. I don't even think that I would say I lost it because I was too nice. I just, you know, was just doing some shit that she ain't want to fuck with. That's what it's based on. You it's think so? It's based off what she want to be fucking know. with. If you not what she want to be fucking Bro, with, you know the, not gonna fuck the crazy with. thing is, out of all the chicks you've dealt with, when you're not dealing with them no more and they meet a new nigga, don't you know that they tell this nigga how fucked up you were? They let, they try to, because they use you as the sympathy to make this other nigga try to act right. <laughs> well, what, what happened in your last relationship? He cheated on me with a fat bitch. That ain't, that, hey, now if he ever find out who you are, he know <laughs> that you the nigga who do shit like that. Fuck fat bitches, Lee, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the type of shit that'll make a nigga cut you off or won't let you over at the, at the red light and shit. No, no, fuck that nigga. He ain't real. It's crazy. Man. This nigga. I mean, I don't know, bro. I, I asked you this, like. What? As a nigga. Uh-oh. <laughs> as a nigga that has accomplished the things that you have accomplished, what still motivates you? The... F- my mind I ain't accomplished shit yet. But I mean, the things that you have done where you can sit down and say, I'm... I'm, a, I'm happy about the fact that I did this. What still motivates you as far as, you know, getting out here and being magnificent every single day? That's the motivation. It's feeling like I ain't accomplished nothing yet. Okay. Like, I have personal accomplishments to me that mean a lot. Like, just little shit, just being on shows that I grew up watching or just meeting certain people that I admire or just having those moments where it's like, you know, where the shit feel real. You know what I know? Yeah. That shit, when the shit feel real. When, it, when, when, Snoop Dogg when you feel like the rappers. hard work. Yeah, yeah, when them you moments. feel like the hard work pays off. Right. But what keeps me motivated is knowing that my motivation is motivating somebody else. You dig? Makes sense. Whatever grind I'm on or whatever they feel like I have accomplished, me feeling like none of my accomplishments amounted, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still like, nah, that's not the one. I'm not focused on any accomplishments because I'm still chasing my goals and my personal dreams. And those personal moments that you have are more important to you than anything. Like, that's why you're able to still be motivated because the gauge that you judging me by, I'm not judging myself by that same success. So the things that you may think that a person that's successful successful supposed to have I don't give a fuck about none of that what is I it about having it. shit yeah it's, you people, learn once you get people something who get, who, people with the ability to have whatever they want only have the shit that they want I don't, I, that's fucking man I don't know what, what joy do people get out of seeing you have the shit that they expect they you expect to? expect you to have, right. <laughs> or your life not looking like the way they see it's supposed to look like. That's crazy to me. Damn, Chico, I've been seeing you on TV, nigga. Why you in the minivan, nigga? Cause I like minivans. Come on, bro. I like minivans, nigga. If I'm in, if I'm in, that's that's the thing, man. You you really have to be able to motivate yourself by the things that motivate you. I don't have the same goals. That's one of the reasons why when we met each other. You know what I mean? Our relationship built genuinely because we both had that same type of mentality about not giving a fuck about what people thought about you. Like, my whole perspective in this is based on something completely different than what I think a lot of people is, is because I didn't start being an entertainer based on the fact that I grew up, I'm gonna be an entertainer. No, this came to me differently. Like, my perspective is different. I have a, a father that was murdered and my motivation is to not go out like that because, you know, he was able to see you later, baby. He was, she had to do the under. She gotta go to work in the morning. Yeah, gotta go to work in the morning. So do we, but we ain't. Yeah, we damn sure. But yeah, I, I come from having that situation happen and I remember what it felt like to have to internalize that whatever this man did before he left, he didn't do enough to be able to leave anything for me to be able to utilize to make my life better. So my whole motivation was to be able to do something to make my life, and by making my life better, I'm able to make the people that's around me and that I love lives better. And what you think about me has no merit in how I move and make my decisions as a human being. And, and right, because all the people who I need to approve me already have. Exactly. And that's, that doesn't change. You know what I mean? Like moments where, you know, the, the things that we discussing now, like these things mean something to us. And we, it, it's so many stories we got that we ain't never told, so many pictures we took, so many things we've done that we don't even talk about because it's not about that. 
fuck all that, that's a part of life. But the things that motivates us is the ability to be able to do those things. Right. It's just your ability to be able to do the things that you want to do. That, that shit feel good. That, that is a level of achievement that most people don't appreciate. And it don't matter. You gotta make some time you for yourself. Do. You gotta do what you need to do. Cause if you ain't right, then ain't nothing gonna be right. Right. And I don't care what you got going on. If you're not right, if you're not internalizing who you are and being the best person you can be, ain't nothing gonna come out right. Nothing. Cause you're not walking in the purpose that you're supposed to. Like, it's just the way it is. So you gotta be able to figure out what's for you and what, what is ain't. that. You know what I mean? What's for you? Because I know what's for me, and I fuck with that. Hell yeah. And that's all I'm going to fuck with, and I don't have no desire to fuck with nothing else. Until some new shit come out. That and I then fuck I might, with. I, might, I got to see it. I, I'm still not, might, might not fuck might, with it. Exactly. But I'm only going to fuck with the things I fuck with, and I'm going to embrace it. And you should do the same. Whoever you are out there that's watching us on this late night, but we got to get up. Yeah, Go man. to work in the morning. So before we wrap it up, just want to shout out to the whole crew. We got a lot of dates coming up, man. We pushing. Yeah. We pushing. We adding dates. Day. Just because you ain't seen your city yet, don't mean it might not happen, bro. Oakland, just because you ain't seen the date, don't mean we not coming. Don't it be crazy when people coming. ask, well, like, we go to a city and then we leave, and then the same people can be like, when y'all coming back, man? Y'all got to come right back. <laughs> Like, do y'all not understand that we will continue to come back as much as, as y'all as would buy like tickets? us to be exactly? Hey man, we appreciate it. Like the, the fact that people say they want to see us where they live and they want to be able to have a, a a piece of the experience that we provide in the city that they live in is beautiful, man. Like they want to be able to say that the 85 South Show with their city after that. 85 South Show Chicago, 85 right. South Show Houston, 85 South Show See, Memphis. these are just big cities. You get this, We coming to the small ones too. Y'all got money? We coming. They buy tickets. They buy tickets they in sure goddamn do. uh somewhere. I don't even know the name of your goddamn city. But we're coming. We coming. We're going to mash it, mash it, talk it, mash it, knuck it, mash it, knuck it, mash it, chuck it, mash it, nugget. In certain words, it's always gonna make you feel like you can't read. I don't care who you are. You can be a proficient reader, but if you gonna see a word, we got a show make coming up on the Indian Reservation. Ain't it on the Indian Reservation? It is. Hell yeah. Oh, I didn't even know it was an Indian Reservation. White people be listening to our shit, think they can't bring us to no events too. White people got long money. It's gonna sound unreasonable, but we, we gotta tax y'all a little bit because y'all got more money than everybody. White people. white people, if y'all trying to do business with the 85 South Show, don't worry about what we do. We, we have the business over here. If you, if you yep. wanna get in, you need to get in on the on the low, what you would call the low end white man. For what we're asking, very, is very low, little money. Very low end. And your rich Not white man can find a deal that at this point is. The best, it's the best deal that's gonna be available to you at that moment. We've been, we've been hustling hard for a moment, for a long time, bro. It's time for white investors to start trying to come over here and make us offers and shit. We ready, and we talking just like this when we get over there. We coming. Just come on with it. We know y'all sneaking and listening yeah, to the shit man, on. Man, it's okay. Like, dog, we, we, we got analytics. They show us old white males 34 to 51 watching this shit. Y'all the richest motherfuckers in America right now. Come on, man. Come up off some of that shit, bro. You got hundreds of millions of dollars. The fuck is wrong with y'all, man? That's what I'm talking about, wife. It's cool to be, you know what I'm saying, be balling and shit, but when you start being stingy, now you playing with your faith because you're going to go to hell when you're stingy. You don't need all that goddamn money, man. The little investment that you about to fuck around over here with us, you can write that off on your taxes, on your third account, bro. I'm gonna tell your wife you fucking your secretary if you don't come over here and give me some much money. I started exposing the shit. I know all about your other baby in private school. And if you feel like I'm talking to you, I am. That's how I'm gonna start ending every show. At the message to the white time. man? No, if you feel like I'm talking to you, I am. However you That's feel. a t-shirt right there. No, however you feel. It's a t-shirt. If you feel like I'm talking to you. Don't I talk am. about my t-shirts around Chad. He'll never make them. <laughs> so everybody who's been asking me to show me the Coochie First t-shirts will be available immediately. 
Immediately. Those are, I mean, I'm getting pre orders. I've had over 50 requests. I'm serious. You can laugh all you want to. I'm going to be laughing with my all the way to the back. Show me the coochie first. Hashtag consent. Hashtag consent. Much love to all the ladies. T shirt. Much love to all the ladies who give me consent out here. Real good verbal consent. Putting it in the air. As a matter of fact, you initiating it. Oh, wow. Man. That's good. a feeling there, ain't it, boy? Good consent. Yeah, that made J O N say, mm. Ain't gonna wound down. I'm like, so yeah, good you felt that point. That point That's made why it. this show has been successful because we speak on things that need to be spoken of. Right. Consent. That's an episode. We're gonna do a whole episode about consent. Very unique process right now, isn't it? Consent. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah. It's the change. You know what I mean? You gotta have that. But when a woman initiated in that regard, it, it, you know, it changed the standard of the interaction drastically. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It makes it better, more enjoyable for both parties. Everybody needs some consent. Yeah. It's delicious. All right, man. We about to go to work at our other job. Yeah. Are we still working for you? Come on, man. I don't never want nobody to uh, be jealous of what I got. Or what they think I got going on. Because I work harder than you. Don't you worry might, about Come on, man. Don't worry about what nobody else got going on. I Get don't, what you got going on. Going but I'm on. just trying to... I want them to know, bro. If it was anybody who was hating on us up to this point, you could come to the table. You don't have to do that no more. Because at any moment in your life... You can stop being a fuck nigga. Yeah, it's never too late to stop being a bitch. In the words of Pimp C, man, it's never too never late. Never too late to stop never being a bitch. It's never too bitch. late to stop being a bitch. This is an altar call right now. If you, a, if you a nigga, you know you a bitch ass, then cut that bullshit out. You can start a whole new life right today. now. Stop talking right about now. other niggas, man. Stop worrying about what other motherfuckers is doing. Stop being jealous. Don't assume other shit. If ain't nobody say you, address you. It was not for you. Yeah. Sitting around, you really sitting around spending your time talking about another dude. It's one nigga you need to be worried about. And that's your seal. Come on, man. You. The more you worry about me, the more it's gonna hurt your feelings to see me worrying about me. Hey, man. Don't tell me to clean off my porch if you got shit in your house. You gotta just let that one sit for a second. You don't say nothing right after that. That's it, for real. There's a lot of people who tell you to clean up their porch. Most of them house full of shit. Your house, your porch clean. And the reason why you trying but to- your house nasty. You trying to, the reason why you trying to pay attention to my porch is because you don't want nobody coming in your house. Ooh, you better keep them on the porch because once they come in your house, they don't know how nasty you really are. Mm. My porch might be fucked up, but I bet my house ain't nasty. I don't give a fuck what it look like. It is what it, it is. It is what it is. Sometimes it ain't it ain't about what it look like. Right. Stop worrying. We already about the gave them that game you though. You just said that. Stop worrying about the porch and worrying about the house. Damn. Uh, and once you get your house right, then you're gonna be able to get your porch right. I see a lot of people still ain't learned the difference between cost and value. It's a big damn difference. Yep. You'll pay that cost, then you must value. Yep. And there's no cost you can put on value. Hell no. The cost and the value ain't never the same. Never the same. That's crazy. You can't make money if your cost too high. Because you can't resell it. Right. So everything you buy, just know. You don't cost that. And that's enough for the night. I know, I know for a fact. I agree with you. We might not even give them all of this, man. We might not. I don't know. This might be too much. You know, they banning people for saying real shit these days. That's very true. Keep that. I mean, if we don't, I'll have it to watch for our own personal. Man. No, we can't put shit in our cabin. Joe be destroying footage. He just destroyed the footage, man. We would have been, bro, we would have been blew up. Joe, Listen, man. Joe has sabotaged us. Man. crazy, man. Joe, keep the camera rolling so these people can Crazy, man. man. Joe has been telling me that he is 
is still trying to retrieve the mobile deal for this. Oh, man. Uh-uh. Listen. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. So look, I just want, I just Legally. want, no, I Time just want out. to confirm right, that this is not, this wait is not a minute. hoax, but this is just not me putting on. Look, turn that bitch so they know you back there. Can you turn it so yeah, put some human interaction on that bitch? No, it's not, Joe, I'm not ridiculing you right now. You see how he doesn't like criticism? But I was just letting the fans know that the mobile footage it's, it, we're still trying to recover it for your viewing Oh pleasure. man, it, yes, we, we we really really just to prove to you all, that we are not the people you think we are. Right, we appreciate. First of all, we appreciate Mobile for to coming out. You know what I mean, and, and rocking with us that night. Yes, and we had you know I don't even want to talk about. I ain't one of the people that's going to discuss because it's make it worse. Because I don't know if you ever going to see it, so I don't want to. I don't want to stay stop talking about you it. Think. You think they'll ever get to see it? See, see nobody wants to commit, and I understand because it's footage. It's footage. It's footage. You know what I'm saying? It's footage. So it's like you gotta. It's, it's weird ways that you gotta work with that. Y'all don't know. Appreciate. Y'all don't know Joe Newman, man. <laughs> y'all don't know this man. I know this dude. Joe, Joe, go home. You do work hard. And turn the camera back on and be like, man, fuck these dudes, man. I'm really listen, fucking sick of these guys, man. Listen, man. No, man. He'll get high and be like, listen, man. They're not respecting women. They're calling people whores and bitches. Man, Chad is a sellout. Chad think, Chad think just because he fucking pulled his hat down lower that he means business. Chad don't fucking tell me what to do. This I whoop Chad ass. It's the 85 Chad South is, Show. Chad is the little brother. People ask me, like, bro, why you and Chad so cool? That's my little brother. The nigga don't know what the fuck he do. I whoop Chad ass. This is the 85 And he's still going to be my show. partner. We that type of friends. They don't make them no more. With real I whoop this nigga ass. Do real shit. This is what it really look like. I whoop that nigga ass and pray for him. This is what it really look like. Call him the next day, bro. You straight. I ain't mean to hit you right in the face, bro, but you move. I don't give a fuck about that. Look how you got quiet. Pull your head up. Don't give a shit. You're not a tough guy. You don't even eat meat no more. I knocked that little pussy nigga out. One punch. You need protein, nigga. <laughs> It's my dog. You can't talk to him you like that. You can't talk to him like that. That's what I. That's the. This is. This is where it happens, man. This is what it looks like. Get up off your ass. They don't make this something. type of shit no more. Go get you something, man. You don't have friends who you, you can, can call dickheads and shit. <laughs> nah. Y'all don't even really have real conversations. Y'all don't know the. Y'all, y'all don't even, know the motherfuckers. You, you, you got cool niggas with. out there who got friends. They ain't never heard their voice. They just text all the time. Where that you nigga live? Don't even know what the fuck. Where he live? Sound like. Yeah, that nigga ain't never invited you, ain't never you over. Heard this nigga voice before. To watch but the y'all game and friends. shit. Y'all ain't homies. Nah. That's what it really looked like. You don't even ask about your homie mama and shit. How your mom's doing? Y'all ain't see. <laughs> Come on, man. Get your shit together. <laughs> With that being said, <laughs> with that being said, you gotta love it, man. Hey, man, somebody found a uh, shout out to the fans again. They sent the uh, Easter, what is it, Eastern Auto? Eastern Motors? Eastern Motors commercial. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Somebody dug it up with all the athletes in it. Oh, yeah. So shout out to that person. Yeah, I don't remember to you. your names and shit. Um, and they found the Dark Wing Duck intro. They tagged you in it. On oh, Twitter. yeah. That's legendary right there. Yeah, yeah. Dark Dark, hey, I Duck. noticed something about Dark Wing Duck. What you noticed about that? That nigga Wing. took his head off. Guess what? The nigga had line gone too. Yep. That's why he wear the mask up so high. Mm-hmm. All head. Head go straight up like this. Yeah, yeah. He was Dark Wing Duck though. Yeah. All right, bro. We got to go get the rest of this money. We got to go to our other job in about four hours. Yep. What time is it? See, by the time we leave, it's gonna be another time. So ain't even no time. Two forty-five. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's how it looks when you shout working. out to Clax. Nigga been playing piano for three hours. I know that nigga knuckles is burning. You can stop if you want to, bro. This shit gonna be gonna stuck just keep like keep that. Going. Stuck just like he that. Gonna keep going. Cause that's what we doing. We work. Man, that nigga finger going. bitch so good. He don't even have to take his pants off. <laughs> Play the piano on the pussy. Be fingering bitches with that same grip. Fingering bitches with his whole hand at the same time. He know how to work his shit in and out. 
Something about clacks, he turned my pussy to a trumpet. They got that bowling grip. <laughs> One of them niggas shake your hand we was talking about earlier. Yeah. You know that his, his finger don't even straighten all the way out. How you doing, brother? What the fuck wrong with your hand? Nigga, I'm a piano the shit out of you. You don't never want to get plucked by him. You gonna split skin. Pow! Oh, this nigga, I'm bleeding. Man, it's about nine niggas want to play the guitar and shit. Man, do y'all need a saxophone player? Shout out to the nigga who's a saxophone player. J O N, did you hit? Did he hit you? Saxophone player. Man, we're gonna get us a whole goddamn band. We're gonna find us some niggas who play everything, nigga. We need a nigga to play an obscure instrument now, like a like oboe a ukulele or something, shit. something like, like that. A, like a woodwind shit. instrument. Yeah. Where, the, where the gangster clarinet niggas at? Yeah, one of them. Can't one find of... no nigga that play the flute real good. String instrument. Where the nigga at with the cello? What's the what's the what's That's the thing? The, the harp. Yeah, and that has some niggas with a harp player. We're gonna game find him up with the harp player. Play a nigga that you know find a nigga that know how to play the bassoon. I don't even know what a bassoon is. Come on, man. It's like a wooden flute a with wooden a saxophone flute. thing on it. Man. You know what? And the crazy part is we got some people that's watching this that's gonna know somebody who play a bassoon that fuck with us. Shout out to all the real niggas that play the violin. We're gonna link with y'all too. Yeah. By the time we finish, by the time this shit come out, we're gonna have at least eight, nine niggas who play something we don't know how to pronounce. Right. I want to find a, a girl who know how to play the French horn. <laughs> now you know how lit the 85 South Shore will be with some French horn in it? We, we you know what, make bro, it all work. What if we get linked with a trap mariachi band? A trap mariachi band. I don't even know if that existed before you just Bruh, said I it, thought, but it I will. Just, man, if we get a flute player, it's probably going to be a white girl. Because white girl play the shit out of some flute. Clarinet. What? What? What, Joe? My Chad don't give a fuck about new ideas. Man. I hit him every day with like four good ideas, man. He just be like, all right, man, I'm about to do it right now. He probably hang up the phone and be like, I got tricked this nigga again. Not doing that shit. I write it down, though. I'm going to call him two weeks and then tell him it's mine. Chad is an asshole, bro. That nigga, I hit the nigga, like, Chad, come on, bro, I got to do this shit. The nigga don't do the shit, then hit me back. Lost, man. Oh, bro. I just thought of, you know what's crazy? I just thought of some shit. You know what we could do? Nigga, we could get the t-shirts that say, show me the coochie first. I was like, bro, I told you that shit four weeks ago. You did? Damn, bro, my fault. My bad, bro. You did, you right, you did say that. I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. <laughs> Bruh. My name is Carlos. Yeah, look, look, look at the chair. Say, All right, don't get your fucking. I mean, that fight you were talking about is coming. Come on, keep talking. I'm gonna see if you're gonna knock my bitch ass out. All right, keep fucking talking, Carlos. Bruh, Chad be All right, I work fucking hard, bro. Bro, Chad be ignoring me so that's much. How Chad, that's how Chad hey. feel on the inside. If you ever see how Chad look, that's how he feeling right now. All right, no, we gotta get these jokes off. But hey, hey, my fucking knees are getting loose, bro. I'm ready to go. You're not gonna fucking talk about me. Go get your fucking hands off me, man. Chad, That's calm down, on the bro. Inside. No, fuck you, bro. Fuck you, bro, for saying that about Him me. Him and Joe be linking up, man. Delete the footage. Yeah. They, you really? That's why Joe walked off. He laughed because he can't. He got a late. He can't stop laughing because he know they probably the met him. Yeah. Hey, these guys are fucking dickheads, bro. Fucking hate these motherfuckers. Just, just, they be calming each other down. Just stay down, bro. I know it's hard. But we're gonna make it, bro. Man. We just gotta stay on just a little bit longer. Just fucking just let them Joe. say the shit that they say. <laughs> Laugh like you care. On, and man. when they leave, we'll fucking tell them that we, that we'll, we'll, we know, bro. <laughs> just keep the program Joe, working. Joe be with it. Be like, bro, how long you want me to hold on to it? So fucking long that they forget to fucking ask about it. Exactly. What the fuck, bro? Just stay, look at me, stay the course. All right, Carlos is an asshole. Chico just sits there and laughs right. and doesn't even fucking defend us. He probably called DC and was like, "Nah, we ain't doing shit tonight, bro." Yeah, go home. Go home.
These guys are dickheads. If you stay the course, little do we know this is the way they're going to get high back with Steve. It's like, hey, we got them. They're done. I hear Jay That's back. Bad. I be like, bro, what the shirts at? Fuck them shirts. <laughs> what do you see these cute ass shirts I got? They're cute as fuck. Wh why are we going cute? I like Nintendo characters. We got some bright yellow shit and it's cute as fuck. Yeah. What colors did you put on it, nigga? It's blue and another kind of blue. You look like the little emoji monkey. Everybody else looks cool. Yeah. Chad, don't put that out, bro. I don't fuck with that. Bro, I'm doing it anyway. This is my show. I do what the fuck I want to do. Bro. If you don't like little cartoon monkeys, bro. you need to get your own show. Bro, calm down, bro. Calm down, bro. Ch Joe. I'm trying to be cool, bro. Fuck that. Delete the I'm footage. I'm trying to be cool. I know, bro. The fucking footage is deleted, bro. We got nah. J-O-N and all that. Nah, nah. He doesn't know. Look at this shirt. Look at this fucking shirt. Look at me. Look yeah, at this shit. Yeah, I know. Look, look at stupid. me, bro. You look stupid as fuck. Look bro. at me. You look dumb. Look, yeah, I look like the wee person that people try to make to look like me. Yeah. That's, DC, that's what the wee is. DC look like the nigga that you, when you first turned the wee on. Yeah. <laughs> Did you approve of that? No, I didn't. I didn't that's even see it though. until we had to put it on. That's the shit I'm that's saying. That's fire. Now you got to go back to the plan because you laughing a little too hard. What was all that fucking giggling, bro, when they were shitting on us, bro? I thought we were on the same team, bro. All that fucking on the floor slapping the door shit, bro. I mean, you got to keep the fucking story going, but look, goddamn, bro. Look, Joe over there on the floor laughing. I'm deleting all this shit. <laughs> look at Craig, man. I, I mean, yeah, but you, you're going to delete I, it, but I goddamn, hope, bro. I hope I Joe mean, don't delete this one, man. This one's pretty good. <laughs> hey, man, let me watch this shit before you delete it. <laughs> J-O-N been watching the Mobile show for months. Yeah. Ain't said shit. See, yeah. yeah, exactly. He, he just, look, the truth coming out. He watched it. No, it's not. It's not. The, 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 the plan is going accordingly. Once he took that oath, you can't break it. It's man, like, we got to get us some new niggas around. Yeah, man. I mean, once These you break that oath. You see what happened? These niggas get a few dollars and start thinking they taking over, bro. I'm about to Steve Harvey these niggas.